Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, Tyvis Powell, Jason Lloyd. Plus, da 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 da, you're loving him, Mikey McNuggets. And so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show starts now. Booyah! Hey, welcome everybody to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show Wednesday edition. G. Bush and Mikey McNuggets on the panel with me today. Anthony Earl and Steve behind the glass. We'll get to them a little bit later. How you doing, guys? Hey, what's up, man? Doing good. Boy, you have a hell of a little week squad, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. I'm very excited. Uh, yesterday was the uh, opening day for the not we don't you know, for the for the Kim Crane Little League team. We're not going to make fun of that because we appreciate Kim Crane being a sponsor. <laughs> Uh, but we, we came up with our chant, one, two, three, cr- Crane. You know, uh, Crane is not bad. It's good. Uh, so I'm excited. And the team is awesome. I, I'm very, you know, it's the first practice. I don't know yet for sure. But I feel like I got some real good ball players this year. I'll tell you what, my, sty- my stylist hit me up, my mom. Yeah. She said, listen, uh, for the summer, I see something different for you. I said, what you mean? You ain't got no more, no change for me? You know, I, I was like, man, you got some jewelry? She's like, no, nah, we're not doing no more jewelry to the summer. It's too hot for all that. Okay. But what we can do, we're starting to brand you with random T-shirt. Ooh. So for the summer, I am random T-shirt guy. I started <laughs> off with what this. What do you got? I'm shout so out jealous to, you It's have. a great shout shirt. Out, shout out to Miles Garrett. Oh, oh I'm yeah. I'm a philosopher. <laughs> ah, I opine. You see what I'm doing That's, there? That is right, right, right. I like that. Girl. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Nice. Like that shirt. Great. I don't know. My mom part. just she just gets them. Like brings, she brings them to me. I so, like it. so uh, <laughs> shout out to you guys. Uh, if you want to challenge G Bush to random t- T-shirt g- g- yeah. days, I, I, you send me your pictures and we'll put them All up. Right. But uh, I, I'm T-shirt man now. Okay. Back to the Little League team, real, yeah. real, real quick. I do have a question. So yeah. last year, you know, we've done this two years in a row now. We've yeah. come out and we filmed. Yeah. You know, your your games. We've mic'd right. you up for the games. Yeah. The first time we went out, it was our issue. We had some camera issues. Yeah, yeah. Last year out, you know, I'm not gonna say it was a, a lack of overall talent on the team, but you know, you were working an uphill battle with with some of the kids this well, year. Well, our best player. Was, I had to quit. I know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a roster. Yeah. He, he this was on year, vacation, right? No, he played, played lacrosse. Played lacrosse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is, right? This year, it sounds like you got the pieces. So if the Kim we Crane do. team doesn't pan out, are we looking at Adam the yeah, Bull as the reason? I am very much on the hot seat. Okay, just want, just want to make sure out. we're all on the same page. I am, my, my seat is <laughs> sizzling right now. <laughs> I got to bring a winner home this year. Hotter seat, yours or J.B. Bickerstaff's right now? Uh, Well, no, J.B.'s is hotter than me, but mine is hot. I got to get it done. So I got some kids that somebody it's it's a different dynamic coaching fifth and sixth graders. You know, last two years I've been coaching third and fourth graders. And Aaron's in fifth grade. And Aaron's in the fifth okay. grade now. Okay. So I'm coaching fifth. He's the youngest player on the team. He's the only kid that's still 10 on the team. He'll be 11 in May. Uh, one of the kids turning 11 in tomorrow. But uh, he turns 11 in May. And uh, I got a couple of 12 year olds. One kid who's 13 already. So, you know, they're a little, you know, it's different. They're a little with a more advanced in their baseball. Absolutely, careers, and I yeah. got a. There's a couple of kids, sixth grade kids, that were. We didn't do. I didn't want to do any pitching yesterday. I just. I, I didn't do any hitting. It was getting to know each other, and then I wanted to see what they looked like in the field. And I had three kids that were throwing bullets all over the diamond, <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. And, and two of them, and, and two of them already were pitching last year, so hey. they're. These two you kids can't have throw, you man. can't if you got three good pitchers. Yeah. That's, that's cheating. And two of them are lefties. That's cheating. Oh, could, oh well, come how on. Many, how many lefty hitters are like? I mean, left hand you're gonna have a lefty on kids, lefty advantage. Yeah, but no, kids have a harder time hitting lefties because you don't see lefties. As of much. course, you. Do. Yeah, it's only thirteen percent of the population right. is left-handed. So especially when you're a kid, even if you're a righty, a lefty can be tricky. And both of my left-handed kids who are pitchers are big kids. Like one of them's five. They're like five six and five five, which for you know, 15th and 6th grade yeah. is pretty big. They're probably two. I know Ben, who I... Ben was left, there last year. Yeah, I got him again this okay. year. So he's one of the, he's probably the tallest kid in the 5th grade or one of the two or three tallest kids. And this other kid who's a 6th grader is also another big kid. So I, anyway, I'm excited. It's a nice bunch of boys. Uh, and uh, and we're ready to go. And the pressure's on. The pressure is on. But it's all on me. The kids, <laughs> kids have no pressure. They just got to play and have fun. I got the pressure. You know, there you go. Uh, anyway, oh, I got to do one other shout out besides Little League. I got you guys like this one. I got to shout out my. Um, uh, I went for a pedicure yesterday. 
Okay, mm. real men go for pedicures. Gene Bush, you've been for a pedicure, right? Um, I cannot believe you've never. I, if anyone would appreciate a pedicure, it would be Gene Bush, because uh, you are all about, uh, or is you know, that the manicure. What's that? Is a pedicure the feet? Pedicures the feet, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, a, I'm not allowed frequently. Frequently to those places. You're I've not been, allowed. Oh, been, yeah. yeah, yeah right. My <laughs> wife is like, but man. you would love it, dude. You would love it. I'm sure I would. You would. Anyway, what do you think about it? This woman, this young woman who was who was taking care of me yesterday, Olivia with a Y. Shall you can't see my feet now, but she did a great job. And uh, Olivia, and I want to do a shout out for her because she was really nice. And you know me, like I talk to everybody. I talk to my masseuse. I talk to the person who cuts my hair. I talk to my. Tra- I, I'm fr- I become friendly with everybody. Anyway, Olivia was a really nice woman, and she's hoping at some point to become a. EDM, which I know nothing about EDM. Do any of you guys know about EDM? The music? The music? Yeah, what else would it be? Yes, wow. music. She wants to be a DJ? Like a DJ. DJ she wants to be you, a you don't e- want to. You don't want to become electronic dance music. She well, wants like, to, <laughs> she, No, she wants to become an EDM producer. Well, you got to say producer then. You can't just say she wants to be Sorry. EDM. Sorry. Well, I was saying, do you know what it is? <laughs> and then I was going to say the producer. Part. Okay. She wants to get into that. So I don't know anything about it. So I was like, well, I know people in other industries. Maybe I could like... Connect you with somebody. So if anybody knows anything about EDM, this is a really nice girl. She's trying to get into this business. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to help her out. I feel That's like what I do. I take care of people. I feel like Anthony would be our closest Anthony connection uh, to EDM music. I don't know too many people in the EDM scene. It's very rare that the Agora gets anybody through for EDM. Okay. I'll keep my ears. Anybody out. else like it? Director Steve probably is not into not EDM. I certainly am not into not, EDM. Not I believe thing. that Anthony is the quickest person that can find Molly on the street. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, I, I'm looking Anthony's at, like, yeah, where? I'm where? Uh, uh, I feel like Earl's got a plug for everything. Yeah, he Earl? do. Like, he got, Earl's, I Earl's feel got like a plug for everything, yeah. But the, his stuff is laced with so I'm, I don't trust the pot quality of that. Like, I can't. <laughs> that quality, you'd be like, yo, they like, G. Bush perished. Why? <laughs> he got something bad. You got from yeah. Earl? You saying Earl gave me yeah. a bad weed? Earl gave me some laced chicken wings. Damn. Was, I thought it was asparagus one though. <laughs> you, dro- uh, you dropped me and Earl into like Coachella. Who's right, you- right. Listen, oh I'm like God. you can find a great festival. Like y'all, yeah. y'all listen, just because I'm like I'm a hermit, I don't be out I don't go outside like that. Y'all y'all know where everything like pretty soon, five, six years, I'm gonna be asking y'all, hey, wh- where hey, where's a good place to get some chicken at? Or where's a place a good place to get some good produce? You're like G. Bush. I'm not giant nigga. Just Google it. <laughs> mm. like, By the way, I got to do one more shout out. You're and then we're going to get to sports. Shout out because I tried a, a new restaurant. My, my, my in laws were in town, and obviously I've been eating well and I've been eating at home. They wanted to take us out for dinner for one night, so I was like, okay. So I, what did you. This is always the test. I got a steak. Uh, okay. But just, that's on my good list. That's I, a good list. I just can't eat bread. So, so you, uh, sweets or so cheese. You had the salad so with it. So I had the salad with no. No, I mash. had. I just had some roasted potatoes, a steak, and some vegetables. That's nice. That's nice. So I mean, it was yeah. you know, yeah, it was a, nice. a heavier meal than I've been eating, but nice. I didn't eat that's, anything that's, that's, that's on nice. my bad yeah. list. But uh, and the steak was very good, and my son got chicken wings. I did have one of his chicken wings. Oh, that's not bad. And it was. Well, the other, remember, everybody was going nuts that I didn't love chicken wings the other day. Well, I don't know what we were talking about. We we're doing keep cut trade, right, right, cut right. The wings. Well, the and I said, where that, was I at during this? Yes, and I said that I generally find chicken wings to be mediocre. <laughs> but this place, it's called AJ's Urban Grill in Westlake. So I, I, it was the first time. I think I actually went there once years ago, but it was the first time I remember going there for sure. And their food was very good. The service was excellent. And there, it was it was as good a wing as I've ever had. My son loved them. Really? Loved ever? Wings. I had just one, but it was sensational. It's difficult to get Top barbecue. Wings, so but, shout out yeah. to AJ's Urban Grill in Westlake. Are we don't shout out. That's for it today? for the shout out portion of the day. Now it's time to talk sports, <laughs> uh, where we're going to shout shout about the Guardians losing a game. Go and ahead. Before, and before yeah. we do, you read. We yeah. have FanDuel back. It is crazy how timing works because yeah. we had FanDuel every day for what four or five months. Yes. And now it's only two days a week. Okay. We have gotten, no joke, like 35 FanDuel tickets mm-hmm. since we stopped doing it daily. Yeah. So we're going to get to them all. You guys are all in a queue. We're going to read two today. One incredible win, by far the biggest one we've ever wow. had on the show. Really? Wait till you see this bet. Yeah. Incredible. But just letting everyone know, if you have sent us in a FanDuel ticket, we have got it. We will get to it. We just don't have 10 times to read it throughout the week. It's only Is that now. what we're doing so now? We'll yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. A little FanDuel read, guys, because it's time for the playoffs in the NBA, NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. 
guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots, home runs, and slam dunks. All on the app. It's safe and that super easy to use. What are you waiting for? You just have to visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to make your first win an automatic. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And then our ticket today comes from Alante, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, this is crazy, guys. It turned guys. Four, or $5 into 4480 on a two-leg parlay for a whoa, 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 result. whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah he turned $5 whoa, hot, into four five. grand. He bet first pitch of a bat single on two separate players and both hit. <laughs> What? An That's crazy. An absolutely incredible It had win. to be the first pitch of the first at-bat. First pitch, and it had to be a single. Couldn't be a double, couldn't be a triple. Had oh first pitch God. single. He hit both. $5 into 4000 so and change who were the by hitters? Far. It doesn't say the hitters there, do you know? And I can't read without my glasses. Uh, so. I'm trying to it say It just says Jay the names France. of the pitchers. It, it, should, it should say the hitter on yeah, there. Yeah, Jay France, I think, hit for the Houston Astros. And then B... I don't know how to say that last Yeah, I'll pull, I'll pull it up. He DM'd yes. it to us. I'll pull it up for us real quick. No, those are pitchers. Those are not hitters. So, and this this yeah, happened. So, the, these are both. Oh, I the, see. At bat, Ozzy was, Albies for the Braves and Jeremy Pena for the Astros. Yes. I see it now. Yo. Yeah. Okay. This so is crazy. $5 into $4,480. Wow. I mean, I was wondering how you could turn that much, $5 into that much money, but like the odds of a guy. Getting two guys getting a hit on the first. I can understand if it was just two hits, period. No, first pitch. But first pitch, first it has pitch. to be a single and for pe- both guys. And people don't even be swinging at the first pitch like that. That is crazy. Good for him. What's his name? Alante, who Alante. DM'd it to us on Instagram. Alante, sent it to us. That's not his, way to go, You can email it to us. You can DM us on Instagram. We That's have a awesome. ton in the queue. We'll get to them all, I promise. Yeah. But Alante... Five dollars into nearly forty-five hundred. That's an incredible, Man. incredible, incredible. I mean, that's, win. that is the definition of no risk, high reward. I, I'm not. <laughs> my fan duel is out of control now, and it's about to be war out of control. Because uh, that just first pitch that single. Just, listen, I'm, I'm on. I'm on first pitch singles now. Yeah, you got to be first. <laughs> Why would I not? For the big wins, it's there. Well, you it's, go first and he pitch, got two. You go first Gee, pitch double. Remember. You go first is pitch triple. Ever? If it ever gets too bad, 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh, yeah, listen, I put it in chat. It's getting out of control. Oh, like, it, it, it's, it's, First it's pitch getting, single. The tournament was bad for you, that boy. That is crazy. And, like, Ozzy Albies and Jeremy Pena, they're, they're like, you know, they're good players, but they're not superstars. Not Aaron Judge and Shohei Otani. It's two kind yeah, of random guys. Well, well actually, those, those would be almost worse because those guys hit more extra base hits. But you get what I'm saying. It's not, it's not two out, super yeah, high-name like, guys. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 that's pretty wild. That could help pay my tax bill. Damn. Well, Alante, congrats. <laughs> Good we'll job, get to Alante. We'll all the other uh, fan duel tickets we've got over the next few days and next couple of weeks. We appreciate you all sending them. All right, real. speaking of baseball, the Guardians' winning streak comes to an end last night. Uh, they lose to the um, Chicago White Sox by a final of 7-5. to five. The unfortunate thing, well, many unfortunate things, uh, but the fact that, like, Logan Allen gets crushed, I think, what, six of the first seven batters got on base, I believe, in the top of the first. Yep. And he gives up the five runs. But then the, the Guardians claw their way back in it. They get two in the first, eventually tie the game up. You're 5-5 five, five in the eighth, and then it falls apart with Barlow, who's been a little up and down in the eighth inning. Especially because Allen, after the first inning, you know, did well the next three innings. And then the three relievers combined, I think it was Gaddis. Uh, Heron. I, Tim Heron. Was it Heron? Heron pitched, yeah. Pitched, but I don't think he pitched in – didn't he pitch after Barlow maybe? I don't remember now. But anyway, the three pitchers between Allen and Barlow were basically perfect. I think they gave him one hit in those three innings. Uh, it was – I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. But the Guardians end up losing 7-5. Got to win the series against the White Sox. Yeah. Got to win today. You can't beat them every single game. They're going to win a few games, the White Sox. But they are horrible. They're now they're, – their top two hitters are already out. Now Moncada got hurt yesterday. He's not going to play today. I don't so understand. You, you got to win today. I don't understand how he got hurt. It just looked like a regular. Let's trot down to first base. It's that that it's bizarre right now. The yeah. injuries in baseball. It seems I, I told, like it's an epidemic. I told McNuggets. I was like every single every single year. I tell myself I'm going to get in shape and join a softball league or a rec yeah. basketball league. And every day I see prime uh, um, prime USDA choice grade A athletes go down <laughs> with no touches. Yeah, right. They're just like, oh, no, I'm not playing. We'll yeah. talk Allen in a sec, but I want to start with Barlow from last night because he was their biggest offseason acquisition. He's a guy they actually spent money I mean, on to bring sad in. Sad state of affairs. But it's the yeah. truth, right? It's the uh, truth. Yes. So you bring him in, and he's had his struggles early on. Yeah. And how the eighth inning unfolded yesterday with the first batter getting on after a broken bat, kind of just weird. Weird play. W- weird play. 
nine, Backlow's 99 flying out of 100 the times, Barlow makes that play because yeah. the bat shatters. He's jumping out of the way of the barrel. He gets on base. And then a few batters later, it was a rope single. It turned into a double, but a rope hit to right field. Loriano yeah. makes, takes a weird angle on it. And I'm not sure yeah. you know, what you were thinking in the moment, but he tried to cut it off directly. It gets past him, yeah. rolls to the wall. They end up throwing out the runner, trying to extend it from first to third. Uh, it was the guy Fletcher who hit it, ends yep. up at second. But just the way that implodes. I know Scott Barlow is not Emmanuel Classe. He's not a Jose Ramirez. He's a mid-tier guy at best in Major League Baseball. But when you come in with the expectations of the Guardians, hand chose is not the right word. But, hey, we, we picked you as the guy we were going to bring in to be the biggest improvement to the team. We're spending yeah. $7.5 million this season on you. To blow a lead to the White Sox. Well, I didn't blow a lead. It was t- I gave up the to lead. Give, to give up the lead yeah. against the White Sox, against that lineup after you come back and claw your way back from a 5-0 first inning deficit. Yeah. Just felt like a gut punch. And to your point, you're not going to win them all. You're going to yeah. lose some games. It's going to happen. Chicago now has two wins on the season. But that just was a bit demoralizing considering how impressive the comeback from 5-0 in the first was right. to get to the point where that's a game you felt like you should have won at that point. At home, 5-5 in the eighth. To then have Barlow give up three in the or two, two in the yeah. three hits, two runs yeah. in the eighth, it just it felt like it got. Is it messed up for me? Like uh, <laughs> it's, I feel like it's a little messed up for me to say this, and I'm doing the flip, the opposite of the G Bush do- song and dance. I'm like, eh. Eh. yeah, it's one game. It's one of those games. Really it's matter. not. It's, yes, it's in the game. grand scheme of things, yeah. it's not a big deal. Gonna give but up some- you know, it's the information we have right now in the moment. It's a discipline, and whenever you lose to a crappy team or lose in a heartbreaking way. It's it painful in the moment, and then you move on to the next game. Yeah. At that point, you have to win tonight. Like you have to win. Okay. Yeah. To win now, again, if they don't, oh, the season's not over. But you don't want to waste series and oh, opportunities exactly. to win exactly. to pile up wins against bad teams because this weekend the Yankees are coming to town. They'll be a challenge. Boston's playing a lot better than I thought they would to start the season. So you you get it. You play the White Sox tonight. A day off, and then you have seven straight games. Three at home with the Yankees, four at Boston. It's going to be a challenging seven yeah. days. You know, hey, listen, you're eight and three. That yeah. really, really looks nice. And it, it does. It does you some justice because, you know, in the, in the beginning of the season, you play some, you know, not so good teams. So you won those games. And for me, it's like this. Even if you win 100, right? Say you win 100. I mean, you still lost 60 games somewhere around. Right. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere That's along right. the way. Yeah. So in, in the scheme of things, I, I like the fact that now I'm like, okay, cool. As you start watching it and you get back more into it, it's like, okay, just win a series. If you win, if you win a series, like you win every series, you're good. You're great. You're good. Yeah. You traded. The, the thing is, you traded Eniel De Los Santos, who I thought was a developing relief pitcher, and he was cheaper than Scott Barlow. And Barlow, listen, he's been a good pitcher. He did not pitch great last year. He may be just on his decline now, and maybe they'll regret making those that deal. I think De Los Santos has pitched pretty well so far, um, but uh, yeah. It, he, they're relying on him to be their setup man. So they're, they're number two reliever, essentially. Now, maybe that changes. It, it certainly will change at some point if he continues to struggle. But he's been up and down so far. But, yeah, you're right. In the end, he was their biggest acquisition. And yeah. so far, he's, he's been a disappointment. And when you go back and look at Logan Allen's start, because we talked a lot yesterday about yeah. McKenzie. He goes five and, five and a third, no runs, but he got hit around decent. Like, no runs. It was a good start, but it wasn't a dominating start against a bad lineup. The first five batters Logan Allen faced yesterday yeah. over each base. He walked the leadoff guy. Mankata slapped a single to right field. And then three guys, they're three, four, and five hitters, all yeah. hit the ball hard against Logan Allen. Yeah. It, it was teetering on the fact of, like, this could get real ugly oh, yeah. real quick. And he I almost he got a, knocked out. I thought he did a nice day. job rebounding he after did. that first five, six, seven batter yeah. stretch to where he ended up closing out the first inning and then pitched a lot better in the second, third, and fourth. In the third inning, he had back-to-back strikeouts on a changeup and a four-seam fastball on the outer corner, which I thought were his two best pitches of the entire night. Whenever a pitcher gets off to a start like that, um, now he's a young pitcher, so it's a little, you know, it's like he's a proven excellent pitcher. He was solid as a rookie, and, you know, we expect him to be solid. I, I don't think he's a star pitcher. Yeah. And his first but, two starts are pretty good, too. Yeah, but the thing is, I, I'm always worried when something like that happens is either one of two things. And it may not be either of these things, but I, I always worry. When, when you get smacked around like that consecutively, I'm always like, are you tipping, a, are, are you tipping pitches? Is there something that the White Sox picked up on on your first two, because you got guys that all they, every team has guys. Now, this, this used to be back when I was a kid, or G. Bush was a kid, like there'd just be a guy on the team 
who would watch pitchers and sometimes be able to figure out a tell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something that you did differently between your fastball and your curveball or your fastball and your changeup, whatever it was. Or if you fiddling around, you fiddling around with it, the placement of your hand too Who much. knows? It could be a million different things. Nowadays, every team has a guy who all his job is is to study video of every pitcher and see if you can find something yeah. that is different between a – each of his pitchers. I don't know that this happened and that maybe he adjusted to it. Maybe it got brought to his attention. Who knows? It could have also just been maybe he didn't. Maybe he screwed up his warm-up procedure. It, you know, because it, it felt like he just wasn't – he was just totally out of sorts in that first yeah, inning. You know, Bull, for me, when you when – you, when I used to come up yeah. and was playing, you know, guys like Logan Allen, like – if he's throwing the ball, he ain't throwing the ball in the the, the mid nineties or upper nineties. No, top it out ninety four. I can, I can guess. Like, hey, listen, if, you, if you, when you got those spin miles an hour differences between low nineties and high nineties, like you got to go up there guessing if somebody's throwing gas and has a curveball. You're just like, well, I'm gonna go up here looking for the fastball. Right. Right. But with him, you can go up there and you can you can look around a little bit because he don't have overpowering stuff. And if he don't have placement or if he's wild or had, doesn't have any command that day, he in trouble because he might walk a guy. And then if he misses any spots, guys are going to hit him hard. It just is what it is. I think we put him in that list with uh, Gavin Williams and, and Bybee. He's not on the same But, but his no, stuff no. is not like theirs. Like, they no, can no. get away with mistakes. He can't have no mistakes like, like that. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, he's a uh, more of a back end, you know, like a fourth starter, which is fine. I mean, not everybody can be a number. Whereas Gavin Williams and Tanner Bybee are number one starters, or yeah. at least I think they should be, or at the very least, number two starters. They have the skill set and the potential. To yeah, be. no doubt. And when you look at what the White Sox did yesterday in the first inning, they were pretty aggressive at the plate. Yeah. And through their first ten games, they only scored sixteen runs. The entire team scored sixteen runs in ten games. They scored five off Allen in the first. They hit his fastball. They hit his sweeper. They hit his changeup. Then he adjusted. And, like, obviously it's a bad right. first inning, but I think when you're looking in the big picture, one game's not going to define a guy's season. The fact he was able to kind of counterbalance what they saw in the first and they hit everything. Okay, I got to readjust, refocus. Let's, let's change the approach to how we're attacking these hitters. Second and even third way, he got to the lineup two and a half times. Like the second and third approach, which is where usually the hitters make the adjustments, he was the one making the adjustments, and he was obviously much better in innings two, three, four than yeah. he was in the first. Guys, if you – complete 30% of your passes in the NFL. You complete 30%. You're you have a 30% catch rate as a wide receiver. You, you make 30% lead. of your tackles on defense. You suck. That's That's terrible. You're out of the league, right? Yeah. If you make 30% of your shots in the NBA, you're not very good. Baseball, I tell the kids this all the time. It's the hardest sport because it's the hardest to have success in. It's a failing The best sport. players fail most of the time. Yep. And so baseball is all about Adju- failure and then adjustment and then you have success and then the the hitters if you're a pitcher the hitters then adjust to you and you got to adjust it's all, your whole career you're adjusting consistently and and so maybe Logan maybe the sc- scouting report said to Logan Allen uh they're gonna this is a team that's not aggressive they don't they, they take a lot of pitches early let's get ahead with the fastball the first you know like I I don't know I don't know what the scouting report was and I haven't studied the White Sox close enough to know how aggressive or not mm-hmm. aggressive they've been but it can be something as simple as that that could you often will see a lot of pitchers struggle in the first inning and then recover and pitch well later in the game not all the time but it's not uncommon uh but yeah he I mean he was cl- probably close to getting booted out of the game in the first inning, so at least they got him. He ended up getting them some well, innings. Well, at least at least this this is uh, it makes me feel a little better though. Uh, when you got you down five zero, and your bats still give you something. Right. Yeah. They showed like, some fight because because yeah. in prior years five zero, I'm turning the game off. Yeah, you, I mean Guardians yeah. was getting one two runs. Maybe. Right, that was it. So that that shows me something there too. The Naylor home run was obviously a huge swing. That was a curveball. Yeah, and I was going back and I was looking at the fan graphs from last year. Naylor's a much better fastball hitter than he's an off-speed hitter. So for him to turn on a, a surprise. turn on a curveball like that, yeah. send into the upper right field, or not upper right field, but the right field bleachers, yeah. was a great sign to see Quan two more hits, 20 on the seasons, tied with the lead uh, in Major League Baseball with Will Smith and Shohei Otani, who have both played more games. Jose yeah. ripped two singles. Like, they were positive. Uh, Tyler Freeman had another RBI. Yeah. Definitely some positives to take away from the lineup. Yeah. However, when they brought in Michael Kopech in the eighth inning and the ninth inning, he was unhittable, untouchable last night. Throwing one on one on the paint. And I always it, thought that guy could be good as a reliever. Yeah, it, it didn't work out as a starter, but it no. does make you like, okay, they hit, 
a mediocre starting pitcher right. in Soroka and then the bullpen. Their but bullpen, when they faced an elite pitcher, not, not elite, but last night he was throwing He pitched great stuff. last night. He throws hard. And, and they didn't he, have a chance. He could become an elite chance. relief pitcher. They, I mean, their pitching basically stinks. But, Sucks. Uh, and, you know, we'll, he'll have his bad moments too, but last night he was dominant. He was untouchable and, last night, yeah. Uh, which is why they couldn't rally. But, you know, as the season goes, right now the Guardians are doing something. You know, we talked about the Browns this year, about how the way they won was unsustainable. My concern with the Guardians is right now they're top five in the league in runs per game, which is great. But they're bottom five in the league in home runs per game, which is not a surprise. And that's just yeah. not likely <clears throat> to be sustainable. It's like getting they, easy runs. They but everyone don't get enough the, easy runs. Everyone right. in their lineup's hitting 300, essentially. Yeah, I mean. It's, it's incredible. They're, they, they're getting hits they're left They're going right. to have to get more power. Uh, Kyle Manzardo is off to a bad start at AAA, or at least he's, I don't think he's hit a home run. He has one. Oh, he does have he, one? He has one. Okay. Uh, have, you, have you guys seen... I got to find these. I got to look it up. Maybe Anthony the can look Orioles this up. The Orioles AAA team? Yes. Have you seen this? Yeah. They just called Jackson Holiday. I know. I drafted him in my fantasy league in like the 15th round, so it's a steal. I'm getting him. Their AAA lineup is – somebody was asking, you know, we know we joke about like a college team versus an NFL team uh, – versus an NBA team or NFL. Mm-hmm. But this is not that because they're all professionals. But the Orioles AAA team is way better than the A's. The White Sox? The White Sox, uh, lineup-wise. I'm not sure about their pitching, but they've been scoring like an insane amount of runs the first 10 games. They're averaging like 14 runs a game. It's absurd. Five home runs a game. Well, they got like, I mean, Jackson Holiday is the best prospect in baseball, but they got like five, four or five other guys there that top, are all like top, top 100 guys, prospects. Yeah, 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 yeah. How are they getting these top? They, for years, the Orioles did nothing, and now they got all these young hitters. They, they, have, too, all, they have too many. They have how, too many. They kind of do. How they, do we not <laughs> identify any of these? Like, we just well they, want one. They've been drafting first or second overall for, like, five of the last seven years, which is a lot of these guys, which the Guardians have the first overall pick. So you would hope whether yeah. it's uh, Bazant. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I can't Baza- remember. Baza- that wasn't who Charlie Mike Farron mentioned. Or, well, he mentioned Charlie Condon. Right. Jack Caglione. Yeah. There's the guy from uh, Wake Forest <laughs> now who's hit six home runs in his last seven games. Jack Caglione. What a yeah. name. That sounds like a ball player. <laughs> that sounds like a yeah. creative a, player. No, no. He's a 6'5 <laughs> lefty pitcher. He's a Shohei Otani in college. Pitcher and hitter. <laughs> Yeah, well, that'll be interesting to see if he yeah. gets the opportunity to do, to do both in the process. Is he, is he, is he with the Guardians? No. Oh, he's, well, he might be. They have the Guardians first pick the in the draft. Pick. What are you doing, Guardians? Why are we not talking about baseball drafts? Caglione. We, listen, we've, <laughs> baseball <laughs> draft has not been talked about a lot, but I think the week of the draft we'll talk yeah, about the draft it. Not, yeah, the draft not told you. we right get now, the first it's pick. Early, it's too early to know who for sure who you're going to take. There's like four guys in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. They're all hitters, G. They're taking the hitter first. Oh, they're 100% better take yeah, a hitter. They're taking the hitter first I don't know, first none of this pitching nonsense. Oh, but uh, anyway, so the Guardians rotation, by the way. So tonight. It's Bybee. It's Bybee going against uh, Eric Fetty. He's been their best pitcher. I mean, it's two starters. He's been he's good been so far. Just, he pitched in Korea last year, and now he's back. You know, when your best starter is a guy who had to go to Korea to get a job last year, you know. <laughs> it's not, not even Japan. I like, mean, Japan's yeah, a higher I, league I mean, Korea. I feel like the Korean baseball league is better than the Philippines baseball league. It is. <laughs> but it's, it's, <laughs> it goes majors, then Japanese, then Korea. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's it. Um, but anyway, and then for the weekend against the Yankees, they've moved everybody up. Because eventually, they're going to have to get a starter from the minors. But they're going to go. Uh, uh, they're going to use either Monday or Tuesday next week against the Red Sox. They'll call up either uh, Lively or um, Curry. Curry, thank you. I, and one of those guys will start either Monday or Tuesday in Boston. Lively pitched a rehab game yesterday for Columbus. He gave three runs in five innings, and I think Curry's pitching tonight. This was really, really weird. Yeah. I had a dream about this, and, and I was like, hold on, Anthony, really, really quickly. I had a dream. I said, listen, the Major League Baseball came up with a rule. We saw about people being injured. Yeah. And they came up with a rule that said um, pitchers, uh, starting pitchers can only pitch three innings. Ooh, that's not, that's that a terrible happen. dream. I don't like that rule. I mean, they just came up, and then like I had this dream, and they're like, "Yeah, Tommy John surgery, Tommy John uh, surgeries are pretty much non-existent now." Like because you think you, of guys only pitch three innings, they did max three innings. Like, and then so you brought in a reliever. That'd be boring. And then relievers can relievers can pitch up to three innings because they only. That's it. So that's it, and you bring a closer in. Yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do. There are a lot of pitching injuries, but another story for another day. Anthony, what do you got? Yeah, guys, before we get into basketball, I just want to remind everybody that Earl's doing an ultimate 216 tomorrow around 5, 530. He doesn't have a full rundown set, but go check it out. Earl has a great show every time the 216 is on. Do not miss it. He has some great guests on there. 
Very good, guys. So we got to talk about Evan Mobley here. Okay. Because now I forgot who it was that said this. Tim Bontemps. Thank you. Tim Bontemps is an NBA writer. Who does he write for? ESPN. Good answer. You're Johnny on the spot <laughs> twice. Then, so Tim Bontemps. Do we have the clip? We do. I do have the and clip whenever you now want. Jo- and your third time, Johnny on the spot. Go ahead. Let's hear what Tim Bontemps had to say. You know, I think you're on Nate's pod this week saying, I have no worries about where Evan Mobley's at. I got the point you were making because he's super young, but they, and you, you mentioned this on there too, the Cavs and the Wolves made trades at the same time for the same reason. They thought they had budding superstars on their team. The Wolves have one. Anthony Edwards is becoming one. The jury is out, I think, quite clearly on whether Evan Mobley is going to become that kind of player or if he's going to become somebody more like Derek Favors because, wow, well, Derek Favors was a very good player who was a non-shooting four, which is the least valuable archetype of player in the league, was also the third pick in the draft, was also drafted super young, was also super toolsy, saying all this because the guy who drafted him is on the call. Uh, listen, we, we dra- listen, we drafted Derek Favors in 2010. Played one year for you guys, right? We, we did because besides his talent, we felt that he was, from a trade standpoint, that he had more value than DeMarcus Cousins would have in a trade if we had taken DeMarcus Cousins. That's why they drafted him? The last part of that quote's the most damning thing in the entire interview. That's, like, that's... Like, <clears throat> by anything they said about Mobley, which we'll talk yeah. about in a sec, Damn. Bobby Mark saying we drafted Derek Favors because he called it he had more trade value than DeMarcus Cousins is a fireball offense in hindsight. This like, is that's why, such a stupid This answer. is why I say it all I the like time. Bobby Marks, but there I are do too. five to six people, organizations trying to win. Why would you take a guy third overall based on when, what you could get if you trade him? Well, in, in their defense, they did trade him his rookie year. He did get traded his rookie year yeah. for uh, Deron Will- Darren Williams. So, oh. so, That's when he was with the Nets, right? Yeah, the Nets drafted him to trade him to Utah. Like, were the Nets, year. was it, was he saying that because the Nets were, was that when they were trying to, like, put together that, that super team? Uh, no, that was before when they, okay. that, that was like the first iteration of them trying to do something before then the KG and the Paul Pierce, that, that came later. Okay. Anyway, that's a weird statement. It's still a terrible answer. Not know. really. Yeah. That's not really important to our conversation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you yeah, were talking about whether the jury's still out on Evan Mobley. I think the jury is still out. I mean, nope. he, you think it's done? Nope. It's done. I mean, we've seen I, I guy just, in their I fourth just, I year. With that. Do you, what do you think, Mike? You think next year, you think, is next year the last year? Well, it just, it depends on your expectation of Evan Mobley. Jason and I did a, a full thing on last week's Ultimate Cavs show yeah. of how we should look at Evan Mobley and what's the reason his development hasn't gone as expected. And the obvious is they acquired Donovan Mitchell. And when they acquired Donovan Mitchell, the fact that he is as good as he is and he needs the ball as consistently as he does for the Cavs to be successful has stunted the growth of the younger guys, and especially Mobley, who gets 11 shots per game. So to think we have any full conclusion on the offensive player Evan Mobley can be at age 22, when he has made tangible improvements offensively to his game, while only getting 11 shots, is trying to put a ceiling on something that we just frankly don't have any conclusion to. The big picture comparison to Derek Favors, I don't think it's as far-fetched as it seems on paper when Derek Favors played 30 minutes a game. He did it three times in his career. He averaged 15, 8, and 2. Relatively similar to what Mobley's averaging now. Mm -hmm. The difference is Derek Favors was 27, 28, and 29 when he did that. He had no elite skill, and Evan Mobley is 22 years old with an elite skill and is still improving. Now, the improvements he's made are not the improvements the Cavs needed to become a good team to a championship team. What are the improvements he made? Those improvements he needed were a three-point shot, a consistent three-point shot, and the ability to handle and create more offense on his own. That part of his offense. So what hasn't part has come. he improved in? He's averaging career highs in field goal percentage, three point percentage. He's a better ball handler. He's a significantly better passer than he was two years ago. Those okay. aspects have improved, but those aspects haven't translated to making the Cavs five man lineup with both bigs, Garland and Mitchell, the yeah. best five man lineup it could be. So there are absolutely credible and realistic reasons and qualms to say, hey, we thought by year three Evan Mobley could be a top tier A level player or at least yeah. showing the potential to be there, which he hasn't got to which yet. Which Anthony, and he's right, Anthony and Edwards Anthony has. has. And, that, and I think that part of the comparison is fair. Yeah. But to also kind of typecast Evan Mobley, who has a very specific role in an offense, where he's taking 11 shots per game, they don't run anything for him, and to say, oh, this is just what he is offensively without ever seeing what he could do with more freedom, 
I think that's trying to put a ceiling on a player. We just don't have enough. Well, what if you had to bet on it right now? Bet on what? Will he become like a true A-list superstar? Yeah. No, I don't think he will. Okay. But I also so it's think not crazy to. No, no. But, so but, he can, you can't kill G. Bush for saying that no. he doesn't think it's. He thinks it's done. No. Well, it's just if you think he, when they made the trade, yeah. and then G, I want to hear your rebuttal. And Von Temp said this: they made the trade thinking we have a guy who can be. And if you listen to the full interview, a little past that clip, yeah, he goes, they made that trade thinking Mobley could be the best player on the team. Mitchell would be their high end too. Right. I'm not ever sure Evan Mobley could be the best player on a team, but I still think Mobley's a piece you can build around. Like, he's not a bad basketball player by any means. If he never gets any better, Evan Mobley plays 15 years in the league. I know, but at 16 he, and 10. Isn't he just a guy like. <laughs> he's an elite defensive player. And he's a guy who is typecast into this box offensively, which is just kind of rebound and run, pick and roll, which I, that may be it. And that, there's a they drafted that may him be to be the best player on the team. Yes, and he's not been that yet. Yeah. But I'm not willing to sell all my money. But he's not even. The, he is he even the second best player on the team? No, he's not better than Jared Allen. But it's it. We don't know the answer to that yet, though. Is my point. I mean, today. Go ahead. Today, Who's no, better? he's not better. No. <laughs> so let's just get to let's get to the brass tacks of this. See, I'm. You people say I'm. I'm the Duke of knee jerk. I'm not the Duke of knee jerk. I'm just willing to get my crystal ball out and cut bait quicker than everybody. Look. These are some guys I'm going to mention that are we 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 heard David Robinson, we heard this guy you know we heard he, Tim Duncan with Tim Kevin Duncan Dunnett, KG which is not true these Don't, are that, first ballot guys yeah. right Evan when people were comparing him to Tim Duncan yes. oh yeah oh, oh yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah. That, and that skewed the expectation for a guy and so let me just give you because he's not lived up to that yet let's yeah. give you a guy that that's a, a true comparison how's about yeah. we go back a, a couple years to Vin Baker good player right he ain't Vin Baker come on. He's not Vin Baker. Gee, come on, man. Do you, do you know? Do you, do you know that Vin Baker? Let's let's go back. Let's go look at Vin Baker's stats. Now, Vin Baker's second year, 94-95, he averaged 17 to 10. Mobley hasn't even touched that yet. That's his second year. You, his highest year, Vin Baker, 96-97, 21 and 10, 21 and 10, back to back. He's giving you. That's that's already. Mm -hmm. That's in his first four years. That's just Vin Baker. We haven't seen that from Mobley. Let's be clear. Vin Baker was a Vin Baker was a pretty good player. Hold on. Vin Baker was taking 17 and 18 shots a game. He, Mobley's taking 11 and averaging 16 and 10. And if we gave if we gave Mobley 17, 18 shots, he still wouldn't be getting that many points. He's shooting 58 percent from the floor. If he was taking that, he's not going to shoot no threes. He's a career high three it's, point it's percentage. It's hard to compare also because the game is so different than when Vin Baker Let, Let's played. be clear. I can keep going. So, and Vin Baker is okay player. Let, LaMarcus Aldridge. <coughs> you don't like any of these comparisons. No, LaMarcus Aldridge. He was a, what, five-time All-Star, six-time yeah, All-Star? Well, yeah. what I'm saying to you is yeah. they – nobody won nothing with LaMarcus Aldridge. Right. Nobody won nothing with Vin Baker. I didn't say he could be the best player on a championship team. That's my point. What I'm saying yeah. is he's not even these guys. So what at least we, not yet. Not, oh, look, hold on. If he ever gets at to least this, not statistically in two, 2014. But Mike G. Uh, Mike brings 20, up a fair point. 23 points, 10 rebounds, 23 points, 11 rebounds, 21. This is years, 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 but years, in, years. In fairness, in, in those days, like the game plan was hey, I'm the point guard. I'm getting the big man the ball for him to score. Here's right. My, they, 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 there's none of that on this. Here's my He's point. not getting that opportunity. Here's my here. point. Well, He's we, taking less shots per game than Karis LeVert. What? Well, that's his fault. He's there. Sometimes Mobley gets the ball and won't look at the rim. Listen, Mobley's not without fault. Trust me. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, he is not. I expected. He's more been better Mobley. lately, but in general, in his career, he's not aggressive here's, enough. That's, that's fair, right? That's totally fair. Here's what I'm saying. Am I saying that he's not a piece you can like? If look, put it you like this. If LeBron came back, all like now, all of a sudden. Oh, I feel good about Evan Bowman. You know why? Because I don't have to have you take big shots. I don't have to have you do no offense running through you. I can have you just rim run, pay pick and roll, and play defense. That's it. That's what he's doing right now. But that's not good enough for this team. You, he has to be more for this team to be good. Like, if, if you want to do that, that's a role player. Wait, gee, we're, we're saying the same thing. We're just saying it different. Well, I think in the end. He's a high-end role guy. The, I, I think in the end, G's probably going to be right that he's never going to be a superstar. And you've even said that. Yeah. But I do agree with Mike that you can't. I don't think you can rule it out completely until he's at least given the opportunity why to Chet, touch the ball Why more. is Chet Holmgren better than him? I don't understand Chet that. Chet Holmgren is better than him. He's better. That, see, that's, a, that's, that's damning. I, definitely. It's, that's damning. It that's, does that seem hurts. like Evan Mobley was overhyped coming out of college. Fair? Yeah. 
and that maybe his maybe you know well, maybe Ohio, his makeup isn't. I was going to say that the type that becomes a superstar player. The, I don't, the I, knock know. on Mobley at USC was he was passive, and you right. thought, okay, he's a freshman, he's coming into a veteran-laden USC team. Maybe he just doesn't feel comfortable becoming the assertive part of their offense. Right. Well, I think now through three seasons in the NBA or 2.97, whatever you want to call this season. Right. I don't think he has the makeup to ever be like the number one option on offense. He's just not aggressive enough. No. Now, he's taking 11 shots a game. He's shooting 58% from the floor. Okay. He's shooting 31% from three, which he needs to take more threes to reach his full potential. I don't care about the field goal percentage. That can go down. He needs to shoot more threes which is the last thing he's missing in his offensive game. He's done things offensively this season, G, where he's gone coast to coast with a little step-through move. He has a semblance of a post game. He's shown the, pro- the ability, like Philly a couple weeks ago, to shoot a big-time three and make it in a clutch moment. It doesn't happen consistently enough yet. That is totally valid. And I don't think he'll ever be the best player on a championship team. But to write off the yeah. fact that he still can't be a really good player, oh, no. because if he, was, if he was on Charlotte this year, He'd be taking 18, 19 shots. He'd be averaging 26 and 12 right, he could in be, meaningless numbers. I think it's fair to say he could be better than he is now, but never become a superstar. There yes. is ground between what he is there's a and big, being a superstar. There's a ton of ground between yeah, those two. Yeah, and so yes. what's, what is the realistic best-case scenario for Mobley? Who's the player comp of his, best, of his realistic best-case scenario? Is it LaMarcus Aldridge? Th- this is, is that the best-case scenario this is, for this him is realistically? Crazy. This, is, this is why I keep saying to you, right? Yeah. I'll go just, just, to, just to finish the whole thing off. Yeah. If he was Nikola Vujicic, you'd be happy. Mike, I don't know enough no. about him. Like, v- Vujicic, listen he, in this league. But, Vujicic in this league has averaged 20, he's averaged 20 points, 12 rebounds in this league. But those are empty stats. Those are empty stats. I, I'd rather, you want 15 points. Yeah, or, or 20 and 12. He, he's on a steps. bad team, right? He's been We're on a bad team his entire career. But that's not fair, The G. entire career. He, I think Mike's right. Don't you think if – so he's on the Bulls, right? He was on the Magic and put up big numbers. The yeah. Bulls traded for him to try yeah. and make a big three. The Bulls haven't if, won jack if, shit since if, they got if him. If Evan Mobley – we're on a bad team, and he was the guy. He'd have he's probably 25 and 12, right? averaging That's, a lot they're, more. They're, they're, you've already – you just proved my point. If you're not even getting those numbers and they haven't won anything – what do you think you're getting with Evan Mobley? I, I hear what you're I, trying in to the say. End, <laughs> in the end, you're, you're probably right that he's not going to be a superstar. I think we all agree on that. But it's not a fair comparison to a guy to say, uh, what's his name, Vucevic, whatever the hell his name is. Nicole, yeah, Vucevic. That he's better just because he's scoring more points. Well, how many more shots is he taking per game? A ton. He, Mobley's and taking then, 11 shots a game. You know, he's not better than Vucevic today? Yeah. Vucevic if, has zero elite skills. Mobley's an it, elite defender. But here's how here's, I will say that. The thing that, I, and I'm not just killing Evan Mobley, he's an elite defender, yeah. right? And Teams would a, rather have Mobley d- than him. Because yes. he's younger, yes. and there, there's there's some, okay, well, maybe he just wakes up one right. day and figures it out. Yeah. However, maybe with better coaching, he'd be a better player. Or, I, you know. or, or with a better system, or maybe with some, hey, how, how's about developing guys, right? See, you, you can't, just, you know, just a thing called development, right? Let me ask you something. Can we get Mike Brown back? I think Mike Brown would coach this team well. <laughs> Mike Brown's a great coach. Ty Lu. Can we get Ty Lu back? Ty Lu. But I feel uh, like Mike Brown coach. is is a good coach for a young team, whereas Ty Lu is the best coach for, like, a more veteran team. It, what the, it depends on what the Cavs do this summer. But I obviously, it, certainly they're not getting either of those guys. No. Certainly I'd love to have either of those guys. We, I mean, we fired Mike Brown twice, what, what, what we but he'd be good. Don't you think Mike Brown would be good with this team? I do. By the way, Vucevic, for his career, yeah. averages 15 shots per game. He's been anywhere between, since he became a decent scorer, between 16 and 21 shots a game. So just looking at the pure numbers. Yeah, that's not, that's, like, that's not uh, a fair I'll, comparison. Here's, here's one thing I could, I could honestly say, and I feel confident saying, we found out that uh, all that all that core four knowledge. Uh, yeah, garbage, there's no core four. Like, like, we found out straight up today. That when Donovan Mitchell came here, he was the best player on the team. Yes. Did anybody not and know that? Then, and then we found out the two guys that you thought were going to be pieces and parts mentioned in the in the twenty five under twenty five are no longer in that mix. They, they, Garland yes. and Mobley have regressed. The Cavs a hundred percent guys, in my opinion, have to trade either Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. Now, before you lose your mind. Obviously, we'd all rather them keep Donovan Mitchell, but you can only keep Donovan Mitchell if, if he's he willing signs. to sign an extension. Yeah. So if what I'm doing 
as soon as the season's over, if I'm Dan Gilbert, as I'm saying to Donovan Mitchell, if you sign with us long term, Darius Garland's gone. Would He's you? gone. We're trading him away. If you don't, we'll trade you away. Okay. But we want you. We want to build the team around you. You tell us what, we, what you want us to do. We'll trade whoever you want us to trade. Okay. We want you to be our guy, I, our I, superstar I, I, I for question. the next bunch would of you years. Trade, would you trade? Because I've been hearing rumblings. Yeah. Out of New York, would you trade Donovan Mitchell for, uh, 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 what's the name? Jalen Brunson, straight up. I don't think the Knicks would the Knicks do that. Knicks wouldn't do it right now. No. Well, Jalen Brunson says he's not signing no extension. He's he in a did? contract for three years. After this one? Yeah, they signed him to a five-year deal. They last love year. him. Then. So in, in three years, right? He's in two in, or three more years. Yeah. Okay. So would would you trade him for Brunson straight up? I would because he's got locked in for more years. But even though I think Donovan's better, look, that just does. I don't even it, think that's a realistic trade. Why? I well, the, Brunson's the most beloved Nick. Since yeah, they Patrick love Ewing. him. I, I you know, but they, the Knicks, they wouldn't trade. Him. But the Knicks all the time screw stuff up. And they've been talking about getting this dude forever. Yeah, but I, I give the Knicks credit. They finally they, seem to be yeah, smart the, lately. This most recent like they made iteration. good trades. They got you know Julius Randle's out for the year. It's a big loss for them. But <laughs> here's, here's, OG Bogdanovich. But I don't think. Moves. But the bottom line is, I, if if I'm Dan Gilbert and I, odds are Donovan Mitchell's not going to resign here. I think we know that's realistic. The, all those rumors are going around. The, the, you know, the fact that Donovan Mitchell, when he was asked about signing here, wouldn't even answer the question. Probably well, he's tells supposed, you all you he's need to know. supposed to not sign. He's, he's supposed to say that. All right, but I, the but but if I'm Dan Gilbert, I would do everything to convince Donovan Mitchell to sign here long term, and then I would immediately trade Darius Garland. Now we've been saying Darius Garland has no trade value. I was listening to my buddy Jonathan Peterlin on the fan, and unlike on the fan where they're not allowed to mention our show, they are directed not to mention our show. We can mention the fan because we don't play those petty games. Um, so, but Jonathan <laughs> Petty saying somebody else is petty. <laughs> Jonathan uh, was interviewing Brian Geltzeiler, I think is his name, who who does. Uh, he's a writer and he also is on Sirius XM NBA Radio, and he said he thought that the Cavs could get a lot from the Spurs. He said they could get outside of uh, was it Vassell, Vassell, Vassell and Wemby. Like, he mentioned another player. He's like, I can't remember the name of the guy. Johnson, was, probably. Maybe that was it. He said, I thought that guy, I think he'll be really good with the Cavs. They can get a bunch of draft picks. That, that Darius Garland will be a perfect fit for the Spurs. So, I need, I need some picks, too. I, I, you can't. There, there's no way you have Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland on this team next year. No way. One of them's got to be traded this offseason. Uh, uh, Agree or disagree? We talked about it yesterday. Yeah. If you look at the – and you know I love numbers. Like, I, lo- I love stats. The numbers tell you that Darius and Donovan – work together in this offense. The net ratings, all the advanced analytics, they both had statistically the best seasons of their careers last year. The numbers, without any context, yeah. tell you those two work together. <laughs> well, you know, my you eyes, play basketball. My eyes don't necessarily agree with that. Right. And I like numbers when they confirm what my eyes tell me. I don't use them as a end-all, be-all. They're not, you know, the Bible. They're not, like, I use it to confirm or to see, okay, am I off here? My eyes and the numbers tell me two different stories. So, okay, l- l- listen. Here's what your eyes would also tell you. I challenge you to say this. You trade Darius Garland for a wing? Yeah, you'd who's love the to. Kid? Who's, yeah. the kid, uh, who's the Spurs guy? For a wing? You just said. Keldon Johnson. He's so, 6'3". Okay, so he's not a wing. No, he's, he's not a wing. So, so, if you trade him for a wing, you can automatically either move Karis LeVert or Max Struess into that position. And guess what? The Cavs are night and day better. I mean, it depends on who you get. You I want get, Brandon Ingram. You're not getting, like, yeah, I want Brandon. I want uh, Jason Tatum, too. Like, <laughs> like, Dar- like, Darius Garland's not getting you Brandon Ingram. Well, could you get CJ McCullum for him? You want, you want to pair him with another tiny guard no, that no, neither no, plays no, defense? No, no. You want to trade one guy who's undersized, doesn't play defense for Nobody's another guy? Nobody's trading you a great like wing it, player I for want, Darius Garland. I want, oh, listen, I gotta, you, they got to find something. They gotta, here, cause here's the as thing. soon as the season ends, I'll go in the trade machine. I'll come up with some trades for you. But like, but, the, but here's the thing. You got to agree. Like Bulls say, I'm with him. They cannot come back as constituted. We tried this last summer. Yeah. And we got yeah. shooters. They say, give us shooters. Give us shooters. We gave you shooters. I can assure you this, G. Unless they go on some sort of run. The Cavs in 2024, 2025 will look night and day different. Top oh, to yeah. bottom. Oh, yeah. Well, you're going to have a new top, GM. Top to bottom than they do right now. I, I, think, I, I think the GM's getting fired. I think the coach is getting fired. 
I think either Garland or Mitchell. Unfortunately for us, I think it's going to be Mitchell. But one of them is going to get traded. That's that's the worst. It, it, it sucks, but it, I think that's going to happen. For me, that's the worst case scenario because oh that God. means you already got Darius Garland under contract, and they're going to try to gas us and be like, "Well, well, DG, he's going to have a lot yeah, more, no, room, no, yeah. room, more room, more room to move." Oh yeah, yeah. And, and, and he's going to be that's right it. back. The to Cavs th- apologists will be in no. with full force with that. The, no. the one thing we have to figure out this offseason. Yeah. And then we'll move on to the next thing. But yeah. we're going to get some sort of clarity on the Mitchell situation. He's either going to say, I'll resign an extension. No, he's either going to sign or he's going to be traded. There's no. What well, that, that's, what I'm, saying. that's yeah. what I'm saying. So we'll get an answer. Yeah. The one that they have to make a true decision on, like a legitimate, it's up to us, not you, is can the two bigs play together? And that comes down to can Evan Mobley develop a three point shot? And do you trust that whether it's JB or if it flames out a different head coach? could unlock the next level of his offense. Yeah, and I mean, that is a question that whoever is running the Cavs has to answer. I, I think probably in a perfect world, and I hate to say it because I love the guy, but I think in a perfect world, uh, Donovan Mitchell resigns yep. and you trade Allen and Darius. I, I think that, and then you go forward with Donovan and, and Mobley as your two best guys and hopefully get another really good two players to go with them in, in the right trades. If I, Mitchell you know. agrees to come back, everyone on the roster... Yeah, on the chopping block. Every, everyone, everyone. Yes. Go Who there. could you get the? That see, that sucks because the person you get that can get the most, I believe, in a trade is Mobley. Mobley. Right. It's, it's but, not. Yeah, it's hundred percent. But you don't want to do it because right. you're like with a new there's, coach. Right. Maybe with a new if system. If you got a good coach, better. I feel. I'm with Mike. I feel like there's another level to Mobley. I agree. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a basketball aficionado. I don't think he's ever going to be a star. But there's a level. There's still levels between where he is and a star, and he can move up let, with let the right ask, coach. Let me ask you this. So we already know he's a really good defensive player, right? Yeah. Like, we're talking top-notch borderline. Yeah, he's level top defense. three. Top yeah. three yeah. In, in, in defensive player. If you yeah. tell me you get a guy who plays elite defense from a big man position, mm-hmm. who scores 20, 21 points on 55% shooting, like... He ain't but Mike, get 25. Like, here's what I'm worried about, though. Like, you know how you say your eyes tell you a different story? Do your eyes tell you he's an elite defender? I don't want to get down that conversation. No. <laughs> I think he's a... I, I don't, I, like... I, I, Look, look. I don't want to go. I, listen, when right, in the playoffs, I'm, was he in the like, 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 I, I, I don't know because, about because that. Because look, look. When I say when you, I said borderline elite, by the way, I said uh, but, borderline. Because elite when, is Wemby. What, when Wemby is blocking threes, yeah. and changing every shot, then you're like, okay, that's elite. Yeah. So you can't be. We can't say they're the same. Yeah, I, it, right. That's why I said borderline. Right, I said borderline elite. Let's yeah, leave yeah, it yeah. there. We got a few minutes on LeBron. We're gonna do Wemby in overtime, by the way. Yeah. Some of the stuff he's doing. I know. It's crazy. Absolutely absurd. Absurd. And then Corey Coleman, the former uh, Browns first-round pick, is going to join us in a few minutes here. Go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, guys, before Col- Corey gets on and before we get into this crazy trade, if you want more basketball coverage, there's no better place on the Internet to go than the Ultimate Cavs show. It's Tuesday, every day, every Tuesday at 530. Mike, what did you guys do yesterday that you should tell the people to go back and watch? Yeah, Jason, Anthony didn't watch it. Jason and I – well, everyone <laughs> should have watched it. Uh, Jason and I went through and we looked at some tangible fixes Hater. the Cavs can make throughout the last three games of the season to try and right the ship. Uh, it starts on defense and on offense. In my opinion, it's all about getting out in transition and letting three balls fly. We also ranked the last 10 NBA champions, and Jason tells us why the list we found is way off and is undervaluing that 2016 Cavs team. He also said the 2017 Cavs team that lost to the first year Durant Warriors was even better than the 2016 team that won it all, and in his opinion, is the second best basketball team he's ever seen. Mm. The team right. they lost to happens to be the first. Go check it out. It's fun. All right. Uh, so, apparently, Paul, do we have the Paul Pierce clip? I do have the Paul Pierce clip right, ready for you. So, Paul Pierce recommended a trade. That the Lakers and the Cavs. That they Where do we see Paul round. Pierce? What is he on? He was on the Undisputed yesterday. Oh, that's a terrible show. I, I think Paul Pierce I can't believe is anybody off watches his that. rocker. He's off his well, rocker. Well, isn't, isn't everybody on that show kind of off their rocker? Isn't, like, LaShawn McCoy on that? No. That's, uh, that's uh, first things first. Shout out to Joy Taylor on there too. Shout out to Nick Wright. Yeah, I like shout Nick out Wright. To, yeah. No, Nick Wright's awesome. That's yeah. the only good I, I, show. I, I like Nick Wright. He's not on. LaShawn's not on that show. No, he's on there with Emmanuel Acho. Oh yeah, I don't Ooh, like that. He one. sucks too. <laughs> the only good show on Fox is the one with Nick Wright and Bouchard. I think, that's, I think that's, that's, first that's, that's, first. that's first things that first. That show is is good. Nick Wright's awesome. Um, we should try to get Nick on. I like Nick. Yeah, Nick's awesome. No, we because he everything has, else on Fox is trash. He has by far the best the best case for LeBron over Jordan. I've, every time he comes with new wrinkles, I like Nick Wright. He's a, now he's a KC uh, Kansas City uh, he's a big Chiefs, Chiefs fan. Yeah, Chiefs yeah, yeah. Uh, apologist. Yeah, he's a, he's a Mahomes guy. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Can't blame him. Yeah. Uh, Must be nice. Anyway, but the rest of the shows on, on Fox are absolute trash. But uh, this is from... Well, this is a wild hypothetical yeah. from Paul Pierce, where if the Lakers and the Cavs both flame out in the first round of the playoffs, they should trade LeBron for Mitchell so LeBron can come home, get, get, uh, play with Bronny, and on the Cavs and do his farewell tour here. I just said that weeks ago. Did you? I, well, but we're not going to trade anybody. Yeah, I'm not sure. LeBron's going to come here for free. Didn't well, LeBron sign an extension? No. He's got a player option this year. He, he's going to come here for free. I, that doesn't – if if the cap – as much as we all love LeBron, like LeBron's going to be is, – isn't he turning 40 next year? Yeah. Okay. He's still obviously awesome. I, we'd love to have him on the Cavs, but if you're going to trade Donovan Mitchell away, you've got to get, like, we're up not, and coming. you got to get picks. We're you not get. trading him. He's going to come right. here for free, <laughs> and we're going to win a championship. Sure. If you've learned anything well, about LeBron, G, and I've talked to Jason enough now to feel pretty confident in this assessment of LeBron, he ain't doing anything for free. Listen, LeBron, let me give you some well, listen. You know, I can, he I, didn't mean free like he's not getting paid. I, I, no, I, listen, but he ain't taking he's like a free agent. He's not LeBron, taking the mid-level you ha- exception. You have but that's the, not what he's saying. He's LeBron, just saying he's a free agent, LeBron not a trade. LeBron has a he's life. He's not taking the He has a lifetime Nike deal forever until he dies. The man has more money than the apostles. Like, this dude got the bag. What's the best way to increase your bag? If he comes back to the crib and wins, he can he can get all the money he wants. That always cracked me up. That yeah. little 50, 50 million or whatever they're giving him, that's chump change at this point. Yeah. Your son going to play. You can come here to the crib, play small forward. Jerry Allen, Evan Mobley, LeBron, Darius Garland, and Mitchell? Stop! That's a championship. So if LeBron comes back, well, then you don't trade anybody. Well, no. no. Well, gee, who's, you got to take someone out of the lineup for Bronny. Because he ain't coming back without Bronny oh, starting five. Bro, coming sorry, off the bench. Dean, sorry, Dean Wade. I, he's not starting. Who are you taking out the starting lineup? The Bronny is not going to start. Not going to start. We're going to put him on that Imani Bates program. We're going to be right down at the Wolfstein <laughs> for a couple weeks. <laughs> he's pulling up from half court. Then we're going to get him on the squad. No, nah, he's got to at least be on if the bench. The, he, yeah. He's going to be on the bench. He's going to he gonna get that two-way deal. Yeah. Then right. we're going to work his way. Now, in the playoffs, LeBron is, is other level. He's, yeah. he's, he's a savant during can, the playoffs. Can, he just... Can Bronny James? Can LeBron still win a championship as the best player? He can't, right? Anymore? Uh, I don't think so. Night I don't think so. Out, no. You guys are blasphemous. <laughs> no, I, gee, I listen. He hey, he could be one A and one B, but for them he, to win sixteen playoff if games, he touches down on the Cavs with that roster. Well, if you don't give up Mitchell and you put him in there, it's yeah, over. Sure. Just, but, but why would you? This because he. He's not coming for for nothing. He's not taking the mid level. Mid level exception. How he's much? Not. How much is a mid level exception? Like twelve. Chump he's not, change. He's Never. not doing it. Charles LeBron, Barkley spends won. twelve in the in the club. Michael Jordan gambles twelve on the golf course. You know Jack many, spends that at Walmart. Do you know how many times LeBron's had a chance to take a contract like that so they could build teams around him? But he did say he he, he prioritizes playing with his son over everything. Well, that's why I don't think it's outrageous for the Cavs to draft Ronnie. But I'm to dra- think they're just going to get him without having to give up something. In I'm return. drafting him and his little brother. I got the yeah, right to, I got the right to Bryce. Draft I will draft, draft, too. draft, I will his, draft daughter. his daughter. Yeah. And they all, in, they all at the Wolfstein <laughs> with Imani Bates. Come on now. How let's old get is this his daughter, done. by the way? Seven. She's like seven. Oh. Lifetime <laughs> deal. I, listen, if you is wanna, she playing hoops too as a little she's kid? She's seven. Who knows? Like, I don't know. <laughs> we, we'll set up a play, like a play stand at the queue or Arthur <laughs> Mortgage and just hang out on the side. What are you talking about? This is a, this, this got to pop. This is a championship back to back. Listen, can you imagine riding off into the sunset, catching Jordan with two rings listen. that you came back to the crib three times and left? I'm not saying it's crazy the Cavs should not Ooh, look at Brian but James. They're, not, they're obviously not. Paul Pierce is lost in the soup is usually the case. But I'm just saying it's not. Yeah, Paul Pierce is lost in the soup yeah, on this because, yeah. I, gee, and I think as much fun as it would be, there's no way LeBron's just going to come here without the Cavs having to give up an asset or something. And if they are going to trade Mitchell, you have to get picks and young guys. I'm not sure trading Mitchell for LeBron at this stage of his career for one or two years puts this franchise in a position to win. But, but, but I'm in the content game. There would be no better content on a night in night in basis than a daily check in of LeBron and his son, how they do grades mm. every night. That would be views through the absolute roof. Be- Gee, so that's what I'm rooting for. I yes. hope you I hope you're Although right. the reality I just is, don't think it's really the reality is when LeBron was here, we didn't really care much about the regular season. It was all about But you care about Bronny. We would care about Bronny. You would care yeah. about Bronny. That's true. 
And every time LeBron passed to Bronny or passed to someone else when, oh. or passed to Bronny when someone else was open, we talk about that. Yeah. Is LeBron shunning Max Drews in the corner for oh, a yeah, mid-range for Bronny, jumper yeah. for, for Bronny? By the way, is the LeBron feeding his son to try and uh, pad his stats to help him make an all-rookie hey, team? Hey, Mighty Base, I need you It'd to recruit. Be, I need yeah. you to start recruiting. Yeah, we gotta get By the way, the most this. exciting thing about basketball right now is that the regular season is thankfully almost over. They got the uh, Grizzlies tonight. They're 18.5-point favorites. They're 25-1 to 1 on the money line to win. The Grizzlies are coming off a of back-to-back. Their entire team's out. If the Cavs don't win this game. So they're game, playing a G League team, essentially. They're playing a bad G League team tonight. And, and it's, a bad and G League. And it's, it's messed a bad up, G League even on the tonight. gambling side. I used to parlay the Cavs easy. You can't even parlay the Cavs. No. You don't know what they're going to get. Uh, 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 Jared Allen ain't getting 10 rebounds no more. Yeah, what happened? I don't even know what's going on with Darius Garland. You, you, sometimes I put him in for Minimoski points. Give me nine today, DG. No, he yeah. gives you eight. <laughs> I think Coral back? I don't, uh, I, yeah, he played against the Clippers on Sunday. So last time he played well. Sunday. Uh, he played Sunday, but he'd been out the last four games before yeah. that. The sore big toe. Dean right. Wade's still trying to come back, too, which is a big loss. Go ahead, Anthony. Give us a read, and then we'll bring Corey Coleman. Yeah, before we bring in our guests here today, it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to be on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. You guys can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Corey Coleman was the first-round pick of the Browns in the 2016 draft. Now, as he approaches age 30, he is he played in the in the USFL last year, led the league in receiving. Uh, was going to be uh, a high draft pick. I think he was going to be the first overall pick in the combined USFL UFL league, and uh, he decided to to hang it up. And uh, I know he recently was interviewed, um, and I can't remember the name. I apologize. I can't remember the name of the – it was it was actually a Browns blog that uh, or a, a podcast network. I can't think of it. And they interviewed him, and he, he shared some really uh, fascinating things about himself, mental health, that, that probably will go a long way to helping other young athletes. And he joins us now, Corey Coleman. Hey, Corey, how, how are you, Corey? Man? I'm good. How y'all doing? Good, man. You're doing well. Good to see you. Um I, I thought that interview you did was fascinating um, and really eye-opening because, in fact, G. Bush was saying to me before the show about, you know, the hard knocks thing, and you talked about that, how you felt like HBO kind of manipulated the footage to make it look worse than it was, and that you were, if you want, since we're there, if you want to speak about it, because you... You, you, your, it was your wide receiver coach, right? That that basically told you to go demand the trade. Is that true? Yes, that, that is true. I never, you know, had a chance, opportunity. You know, I was kind of afraid to come out and tell my story because you know you deal with so much stuff. You don't want the, you know, blackmail. You don't want to be like, oh, you know, all this stuff. So yeah, now I feel, you know, I'm in a in a space and place where you know. I have told, you know, recently the side of the story where everyone and all the fans and stuff can, like, know the real. Yeah, like, I, I was just talking to him before the show, and I said, man, you know, it was, it, you know, on the thing like Hard Knocks, there, you know, there's sound bites and things like that. And I just remember at the time, that was, like, one of the biggest sound bites, you know what I'm saying, yep. that, that was out at that point. And, you know, I, I told Bull, I said, do you think like that that kind of like you know messed up his career because that paints a picture yep. of you especially talking to a head coach and it was just like I, I just found it weird that you know you did get a couple other opportunities but you know based on just certain just on basic physical talent i'm like well Corey coleman got better talent than this guy he getting a shot why didn't mm-hmm. he give him so i feel like it just do you feel like when they they showed you in that light it was just like a lot of other teams and a lot of other GMs kind of stepped off. Yeah, uh, for sure. Like I, my whole career, that's probably the worst decision because it followed me everywhere. Everywhere I went, every team they had questions about that. You know, um, questioning my character and stuff. I had to like re, like I guess, like 
redefine myself and put up an image like you know i'm like dang they think like i'm just some horrible person but you know when you look at the hard knocks situation you know um it, it was messed up you know um how everything played out you know and i was devastated um it i struggled for a long time you know with and still like with mental health with backlash on that getting death threats just so much stuff and that's not how it really played out you know um a, my receiver coach at the time after practice i was in the receiver room he was like man it's a guy that i trust you know at the time i was young he was like you need to go up there and ask to be traded you know i'm like like really like he's like yeah he's like they're playing with you go up there right now ask to be traded out it should is like, i would go into you off office so i'm listening to a guy and i'm emotional at the time right now too because what's going on you're hearing all this trade rumors and stuff like that and the guy that i trusted in the building he led me in the wrong direction and i went up there and that's how it really you know played out i went to talk to Todd Haley at the time, and he told me, he was like, you're the most talented guy. You know, we had some words back and forth and things like that. And uh, I just feel like with my career and stuff, it was, you know, I had to deal with that everywhere I went. By the way, the interview that you did was with Dogs by Nature, so I want to give them credit yeah, for, yeah. for uh, sharing this, this story first. But go ahead, Mike. Yeah, and Corey, now you're working with the uh, United Fitness Lab, so make sure you guys check out Corey doing his, uh, his next business venture down there with that. But, Corey, I'm curious, when players get drafted, we always hear it's all about fit, and it's all about going to the – hopefully we'll get Corey card. back in a sec. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's about, yeah, it's always about you know, a certain fit and going to, right, going to the right organization. And the same player could be super talented, and in one situation he succeeds, the other situation it doesn't work out. Being a player who was drafted in the first round like you come to Cleveland, obviously it didn't have the result you wanted. Do you feel like your career would have gone a completely different way if you had been drafted by a different team, maybe to the point where you're still playing in the league today? Like, is that as important as it seems to us from the outside looking in that fit and the situation is that important for a rookie's success? Facts. I would have rather got drafted, you know, but the situation is everything, right? I'm going to go with that, you know, um, the right fit matters more than a draft, what pick you are and stuff like that. You know, going to an organization that's stable um, is way more important than getting picked, you know, because if you look at it through the Browns' history, a lot of the first rounders, you know, I guess you would say don't pan out the way that, you know, um, people would like. So you got to stop. Sometimes stop looking at the players. You got to start looking at the organization, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, um, if and, and, and with me, my battle me to catch off with me no, too. Ahead, people don't realize, people don't realize too that I got hurt two years in a row. Some stuff you can't control. My rookie season, I was going, I was on pace to having a good season for a rookie. I broke my hand, and I broke my hand. And I went to the doctor. I met with the people don't know this either. I met with the doctors, and they said, "Hey, you know, your hands broke. You're gonna be out." I'm like, "Do I need surgery?" The Browns is like, "No, you know, you are um, future. We don't want to get you surgery." And the following year, I broke my hand in the same place. And I'm like, and then they're like, "Okay, we need to do surgery." So like, people forget that I was hurt two years in a row. Mm. That's so, crazy. so they had. So wait I, a second. So, Corey, let me just clarify this. And what's interesting is, like, you know, the Browns, I feel like, are a different organization now than they were certainly eight years ago. Oh, they're, yeah. they're being run by better people now, better GM, better coach. And had you come to the Browns now, maybe it would have been a whole different story. But obviously, at the time, the Browns were a complete disaster, as you know. But you're saying, so the doctor, this was an, like an independent doctor? Or was it the team doctor that said you needed surgery? This is the team doctor. So first time I broke it, they agreed that we're not doing surgery. Okay. And the second time we broke it, the following year in the same place, they're like, okay, we need to do surgery. So I think I should I should have got surgery the first time. Oh, wow. Yeah. But the team advised you against it. But, That's not good. You know, you, you know but, it's so crazy. Go ahead. Yeah, but people don't, you know, a lot of people don't know these things. I was sure. so scared to talk to the media for so long. Yeah. Well, you know, Corey, I look at back at that time, and, and it had to be kind of tumultuous, right? I, I go back then, 
You take a look. I, I believe uh, you, they had Terrell Pryor that was on the roster, correct? Yep. yep. I believe in that receiver room, he was transitioning to receiver. You, you had Josh Gordon, who I remember came back, and he came back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game like in the preseason, and he played pretty well. Yeah. And obviously they had you. Um, and then there was a, a thing between Hugh Jackson and, and, and Todd Haley. Like, talk about a little bit, like, all you guys being in that room. And it's crazy because you guys were so so talented individually, but it just seemed like it just never worked out. It just seemed like it was just it was just chaotic. It, it, for sure. You got to think about, too, my GM got fired. Um, Sashi got fired after, I think, my first year, right? So that's very hard for – you know, players also, because now you're bringing a new GM, and ultimately the GM, if you're not, he didn't draft you. They bring in a new GM. The one GM who drafts you, he's going to stick by your side for way longer than a guy who didn't draft you because he just get rid of you because I didn't pick you, you know? Yeah. And when, when the other GM came in, he started getting rid of players, started cutting players, um, Dorsey at the time. So... It was a lot of disconnect in the organization, and all the players could tell, right? We could tell that Ty Haley and Hugh Jackson weren't on the same page, that Ty really didn't like the players that Hugh liked. You know, Ty felt like, you know what I mean? In my opinion, he, I think he felt like he should have been the head coach. You know, it was a lot Definitely. of disconnect in the organization, and players could see that. Corey, I swear I have some fun questions in a sec, but <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just gotta ask this last one. And fascinating, appreciate you opening up like this. Did anything kind of go right during your time in Cleveland? It feels like everything that could have gone wrong for you in those two seasons seemed to go wrong, and that's it's kind of plays with the track record of how the Browns were between '99 and the last two years. But holy crap, man! It feels like everything that didn't go your way, like nothing happened in the right way for you. Um. I was I'm always thankful for the Cleveland Browns for taking the chance on me and, you know, changing my life. So, you know, I'm going to put that out there. Um, I love the Cleveland fans, the ones, you know, who was on my side. Um, but I, like, for my mental health where I was going, you know, on the path I was going, I needed a um, fresh start, you know. For sure. And – just for my own sake, right? Yeah. The downward spiral that I was heading, you know, um, and it was not to be like, you know, how do I say it? Not to be like, oh, I went out this city, that I don't like the city or anything like that, because I did like Cleveland, but my mental state was, you know, was more important, you know, for me to go somewhere else for my career yeah. and stuff, but it hurt me the way how they turned it and how they, like, play with my name like I was just some horrible person you know Corey and I and, and I got and this other thing I talked to the owners you know multiple times and they tell me oh we love you you know all this stuff but if you love someone why would you let someone try to mess up my character man you have had one-on-one -on -one conversations you know, you have told me, hey, I love you. I'm by your side and stuff. And you let them go put this stuff out about me. Yeah. Yeah, that was tough. That's tough. That's when you really know it, it's a business. Yeah. They don't care about you. Yeah. That they is, don't care. That, that is definitely true. The owners care about the bottom line. That's that's usually uh, that's usually it. You know, you were, you were very honest. We talked about this, art, this interview you did with Dogs by Nature. And you were very honest about... Uh, dealing with depression, dealing with anxiety. This is, these are things that many, obviously men and women, but speaking, you know, there's no stigma for a woman and mental health, but for a male athlete especially, there could be this stigma. I think that's changing, I hope. I'm, I'm not in locker rooms, I don't know. I feel like it's changing because we're having more and more players like yourself saying, hey, I had to deal with this. I was drinking too much. I was depressed. I, there's a lot of guys going through this, but I think there's a lot of guys scared to admit that they're going through this, right? And and the fact that you and others are speaking up about it, I do think you're going to help. There's probably kids in high school right now going through this, kids in college right now going through this, that even when you're having success, right? In college, you were great. You put up all these huge numbers, 
but you were probably still dealing with those issues. For whatever reason, you were able to, you know, get over it and, and not get over it, but push through it and still have success. And the older you get, now you're making money. There's different kinds of pressures. I don't know, but I, it was very brave to do it. And uh, I, I think it, 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 it will resonate with a lot of people. So kudos to you. But take us through that time because you talked about how you were drinking a lot when you were with the Browns and stuff. And that had to be really, you know, looking back, that had to be really tough. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was really tough. You know, I was in a dark place. I'm not going to even lie. Um, and, you know, it was more so, you know, I knew I was in a dark place too when I stopped coming home to my mom, you know, and yeah. I was, you know, that, that what now I look back, um, you know, I was hurting her because I wouldn't come home, but I thought like, I'm like, hey, I made it to NFL. I'm sending you money every month. Like, I'm thinking that, like, I'm here. I'm going to send you this money. I'm going to do this. But in reality, she just wanted me to come home, have a home-cooked meal, be around me. But I was so dysfunctional, and I wasn't right in the head. I didn't want her to see me. So I was trying to – I was avoiding her. I was avoiding my family. Yeah. You know, I was drinking. Sometimes I come to practice, drunk, you know. Um, I was depressed. I was dealing – with, you know, multiple women trying to cope, temporary, you know, fulfillment. Um, and and I just saw myself, and that's why I said that I needed a fresh start, you know, because I look back, I'm like, I'm not even this person, right? Um, and I think, you know, we're losing, you know, a lot of pressure, you know, being a first-round draft pick, of course. Um, and everyone put it on, you know, a lot of times, the first-round draft picks, right? Yeah. You know, it's an easy person to put it on. Oh, he's not panning out. Why is he not panning out? He had the worst old line while he was at Cleveland in the NFL. You know, who was my quarterbacks? I played with like 10 different quarterbacks in two years. <laughs> you got guys who have the same quarterback for their entire career. You got a guy who have the same coach for their entire career. Yeah. Um, so I was dealing with a lot of stuff, and I reverted to – coping with bad, with bad stuff, you know, and I was going through it, um, just depressed, miserable, you know, showing up sometimes I was like late, you know, and I just make up excuse because I didn't want them to really know like what I was dealing with and stuff and you, you know, this, whatever, sir, you're supposed to be a strong man, you don't supposed to cry, you don't supposed to do any of this, complain, but um, I was hurting when I was there. You know, um, I, you know, this is a, this is a, you know, nowadays we in the social media era and um, even as believe it or not, as media members, right. Um, even on Twitter, you know, we deal with, all right, who do you respond to? Who do you not respond to? Um, talk a little bit about how you coped with social media and how athletes today cope with social media. And, and cause it's easier said than it's done to, you know, people come from different areas and different places. And so when fans say certain things on social media or DM you or, you know what I mean, you're getting all these emails or different things like this, how is it, how difficult is it for a, a professional athlete to blank all of that out and just kind of like concentrate on football? Um, it's very, very hard at a young age. Now, I don't care. But when I was young, I was 20, 21, 22, like, that stuff used to bother me, like used to, because you, you see it, right? So you see the DMs, you see in the tweets or whatever, you can play, when I was young, you can play like, oh, it doesn't matter, but you see someone, especially like who I am, I'll try to make everyone happy, you know, I wanted to, you know, try to make the fans proud, you know, so you see it, and they don't really know what's going on, right? Like what's the truth they just saying Sundays or whatever the case might be you know they're not saying saying it all the way so it used to bother me it used to have me feeling some type of way I'm not gonna lie I probably got over on Instagram probably got over like 3,000 people blocked mm. that's so fucking good for you good for you, you know? man. seriously yeah. yeah but when I was young he used to eat at me now I'm okay because I got a better understanding of things so, Corey, let's talk about that. Obviously, you've turned it around, the fact that you acknowledge 
and are able to talk about mental health issues. You've talked, I, I saw in this article, you talked about, you know, not drinking to excess anymore. And, and obviously you had a great season last year in the USFL. What turned it around for you? And do you feel like you're in a good place now? I do feel like I'm in a good place. And I'm going to give a shout out to Pat Sherman, who's my coach at the Giants. When I got to the Giants, after all the stuff I went through, you know, even with the Bills, right? I can speak about the Bills. I went there. I have a text to this day of the GM at the time saying, like, hey, you're killing it. You're going to help us do so great, all this stuff. The GM texts me. I didn't have his number. He texts me. Tell me why a couple, what, like, a week later, two weeks later, I got released. But he, so it was a lot of stuff that started to build up. Like, I started having trust issues. Yeah. Like, I'm like, man, these organizations, this dude just texts me, went out his way to text me. I didn't have his number. And he texts me like, you're killing it. I see the speed out there. You know, you're going to be have a great career here. And two weeks later, I get released. And I ask him, you know, what's going on? We don't know what's more important to you. You putting the team first or you going to the Pro Bowl? I still remember it vividly. And, and I was so confused because I'm like, you know, I just got on this team. I didn't even know everybody's name on this <laughs> Right. Team. Like, what you talking about? Do, do I got a stunt double? <laughs> like, 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 I was so confused, right? I'm like, this is the exact same word. We don't know what's more important. You putting the team first or you going to the Pro Bowl? I was being quiet while I was there at the Bills because obviously they just put out this stuff on hard knocks. So I'm like, I'm going in here. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to do my job. Like, that was my whole mentality, you know. I was scared because they put out all this stuff. So, when I, to that, my bad, I don't mean to go into too much detail, but the devil back. When I, got to, when, when I got to New York, I was broken as a kid. I'm not going to lie, I was broken. And they put, oh, he's the journey, man. You know, I'm seeing all this stuff, right? So, I get to New York and boom, I work out for him. You know, um, I talk with Pat Sherman, who was the head coach. And Mr. Gettleman, man, those are my guys. I appreciate them. And when I got to the receiver coach, he was like, you got to work from the bottom. You know, start like he just started judging me, you know, just based off the hard knock stuff, all this stuff, you know. He automatically thought I was this type of person. Like, you know, um, he started judging me. And Pat Sherman, he said, I'm going to give you a fair shot at this. I said, that's all I ask. You know, I came in, the, my receiver coach was like, you're going to start from the bottom, you're going to be on practice squad for a while. I was like, that's okay. You know what I mean? I'll, I'm going to work my way up. And, like, a week later, I started returning kicks. Well, Eli, me and Eli was cool. They started playing me at receiver. Eli took me in. This is a Hall of Fame quarterback. I'm not expecting Eli to be like that. Eli is my guy. I still talk to him today. I thought he was going to, you know, he, he took me under his wing. He, he flew me out, summer workouts, to work out with him and stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm back happy. Like, at the time, I'm like, I'm feeling, you know, the love of the game now, you know. Um, and so the following year, just they were going to pay me. They were going to extend me. They were going to give me a pretty good contract. But I tore my ACL, if y'all remember that year. Mm -hmm. I was starting at the X, you know. I was starting the X receiver. I, I tore my ACL. You know, I'm sitting there, I'm crying, because I know that I'm going to show, at the time, show the world, prove everyone, like, this is who Corey Coleman is, right? Boom, after the season, Pat Sherman gets fired. Just my luck. He gets fired. Boom, they bring in another coach. You know, when you bring in another coach, they want their players. If you're not on long-term deals or anything like that, they start chopping because they want to bring in their own mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And they was kept on bringing me back. And it was some guys on the Cleveland staff on the Giants at the time. And they were like, man, you look like a totally different person. If we had you early on, if we would have drafted you when we was at Cleveland, he said you would be a pro bowl. This the guy was telling me. He was telling me this. And it was just a lot of, in my career, just you call stuff unlucky, you know? That's that's crazy, Corey. I, I want to ask a question that's not necessarily related to your career, but obviously you played at the highest level, so you have more insight on this than we do. But we have discussions about 
to go and we rank things and we try to have some fun. When people ask you who are the best receivers of all time, Corey, in your opinion, as someone who played the position at the highest level, who are the three, four best undisputed guys who not necessarily you modeled your game after, but were the best of the best, the cream of the crop on that Mount Rushmore level of receivers, in your opinion? Okay, okay, okay. Man, see, it's so hard. When people ask me this, I'm going to give you the answer. When people ask me, it's so hard because it's so I mean, it's different types of receivers. Yeah, right. Right. But I'm I'm going to go Antonio Brown. I'm going to go Randy Moss. Okay. I'm going to go – and I'm going to put him in it, his mentality, too. I have to. He's one of my favorite receivers of all time, obviously. I'm going to go Steve Smith. Yep. I'm going to go Calvin. Okay. It's four. Give me one more. Give me one more. And I'm going to go uh, – I, I, I'm not going to go, like, too far back. So I'm going to go Julio. He was uh, so good. good. Julio was so good. In his prime. Yeah. The combo of size and speed. No doubt. Incredible. Yeah, you're, you're too young for Jerry Rice. You didn't see Jerry right, I Rice. I was going to say Jerry Rice. I yeah. was, but I'm too young. And yeah. I didn't, like, I'm not going to – he, he's – obviously, he's number one, right? If you yeah. – like, that's like Michael Jordan and stuff. But I'm going to go, like, who I actually uh, – That makes sense. This. That makes sense. Corey, what's the plan? 30th birthday. You got big plans for the 30th birthday this summer? Uh, I think I'm going to go, like, to Bali or Thailand, you know. That's big plans. Yeah, that counts. <laughs> it's so funny. Somebody was just – I was literally talking to somebody yesterday – that had gone to Bali and said it was the most amazing place on earth, and now he brings up Bali. That is weird. Have you been there before? No, but I see pictures. I'm trying to go jump off the elephants into some water <laughs> and go catch some animals, monkeys and stuff. That's where the pigs are in the water, right? Isn't that where you can like, swim with the yeah. pigs? Yeah. Damn, I want to no. swim with pigs and jump off of elephants. Now, what the hell? Now, listen, maybe Corey, I, I got to ask you this, man, because I'm, I'm going through it right now. I'm, I'm, I'm having... You know what I'm saying? An intervention, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, back in the day when I was younger, I couldn't get all the Jordans, right? So, like, for me, I just had to get, like, so now I'm like a, a child. I'm petulant. Like, I'll be going to the store and be like, no, I'm going to get these shoes today. Like, I need these. Um, first of all, do you still have a mean Jordan collection? And if so, um, what, what's your favorite um, Jordans? I definitely do. I probably got over like, like over three thousand pairs of shoes. Yeah, oh, yeah you I said three thousand. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, three thousand. Uh, the reason I know this because I'll be oh, I'll be on the internet, God. like, and I like I remember, like, I've been yeah. searching, like, people like GQ. They be having the shoe things Damn. where they go in and buy the shoe. I said, man, Corey Coleman out of anybody. Where do you put three thousand pairs yeah. of shoes? Corey Coleman shoe game. He's got a crazy. big closet. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got in my in my master. Room, I got two closets upstairs. I got a whole room that's a shoe room at my mom's house. I have shoes in the garage, and I have a room at my mom's house. Um, so shoes in there. Boxes is stacked up. You know, it, it, yeah, it's a lot. But so, it gets overwhelming because it's like, what am I going to wear with this? With this, it's just a lot. Well, how do you yeah. – I, I got I to gotta, – How do you even find yeah, them? Are they like catalog? If you got to find a special pair, how do you know? Is it at your mom's crib? Is it in the, the closets? In the second – like, how do you know where a certain – if you're going out on a Friday night, you need yeah. a certain pair of shoes. Out of 3,000, how do you find the pair you're looking for? So, I have so many shoes. I just – would I pick out my outfit, right? And then I go in my closet and I'm like, okay – Am I feeling the ones, the twos, the threes, the fours? And my house lady, she do a pretty good job of organizing the stuff for me. The ones at my mom's, I got like doubles of a lot of stuff too. Okay. So, yeah. So what's the best pair? Yeah, I'm only putting on the so, so what you so what you is what's the what's the go to if you got to get them? I I like the causes the four the, the fours. Mm-hmm. No, those there that's the collab i like the like people don't know i like the dawn twos those yeah. are pretty sweet yeah um this depends you know what we're doing we getting dressed up dressed up or we just going to the gym these are know, not oh, it these are not it those are not it these are not it at all 
<laughs> I do not have a good shoe game there, Corey. I got no shoe man, game he got whatsoever. The, he got the Brooks on, dog. He got the he got the, I got the walkers. Brooks, man. Well, they don't make. I got fat feet. What do you want from me? They there don't make Jordan triple wide. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, oh, Look at oh. the wide. Get a little blue in there. A little blue. These is a twelve double E wide. This is crazy. Corey, the reason Bull never plays the NFL. What size shoe you in? Me, twelve and a half. Uh, twelve and a half. Five, no, four E, twelve and a half. <laughs> I got big wide feet. He yeah. don't even come in. He got all kind of alphabet numbers beside his joint. Twelve. What do you want? I'm dash like, six I'm, B. I'm, I'm, I'm built. I'm built like a short guard. I mean, what do you want me to do? That's it. You the, know. Re- the reason Bo didn't play was he couldn't get two feet in bounds. Dude, he would need to land on the hash mark to get two feet in bounds. That's true. I would not have been able. I would not have been able to do the tippy toe there. That would have not worked Ooh. for me. <laughs> Oh, you crazy boy. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Corey, we really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Hey, for best of luck time. to you, Corey. Best we appreciate luck. you coming Salute on, man. You, Take care. Thank y'all for having me. All right. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Appreciate time, you, Corey. Man. Good luck. Have a good one. Corey man. Coleman. I tell you, you know, I can be as harsh as anybody when it comes to criticizing players. Oh, no, you out of pocket sometimes. I, I try to never make it personal. I try, but yeah, sometimes yeah, it crosses yeah, the yeah, line. Yeah. And I, I'm sure, like most people, I've been critical. You too, probably been critical of Corey Coleman. Of course, you know that. That's because you, you, you're not thinking about like what's this guy going through. And this you, is you know the, you don't the, know any of that stuff unless they tell you. This of is the not. exercise. Yeah, like I always tell people, it's easy to get in front of a camera, and when you ain't gotta speak to, when you ain't gotta see nobody face to face, and then you don't have to digest. Right. What your words mean to that person. Sure. Like, there are pretty times, there are some times where, where he's pretty much, somebody has said something to him that has hurt him to the core where he couldn't sleep. Yeah. Couldn't think right. Like, the fact that, like, I think that's important to, because sometimes we see these players as props, parlay machines. Right. Guys that we, like, we throw people away so quickly, like, he like, man, when he, you know, the, the part that really hit me the, the toughest was when he said, you know, when I went to Buffalo, I, I arrived in New York as a as a broken kid. Yeah. yeah. Like, when, like and, and when he's like, when he says my, my general manager yeah. said I was doing a good job and, and, and that, like he appreciated what I was doing and I'm going to have a long career. He believed him. And, he thought that right. was his. And, and listen, you know, one thing we didn't get into, but he, he had talked about in this article. When, for most of his childhood, his dad was in jail. His dad got out. He was around for a couple of years. He went back into jail. I'm pretty sure his dad's out of jail now, and they have a relationship, and I think they have a good relationship. But, you know, anybody that know, like, if you grew up and your dad's not around, or your mom's not around, whatever, one or the other, in his case, it was his dad was not around, like, that affects you. He grew up in a very, very poor. He was moving around a lot. Like, he had a rough childhood. So, yeah, it makes sense. You'd be freaking depressed and, and anxious with, yeah. when you have a rough childhood like that. And there's such a stigma for athletes. And he mentioned, and I'm, I'm curious what you think, because he mentioned it, we didn't really get into it, but it, it's not just athletes. He mentioned being a young black man. Is, is there a stigma, do you think, like in the black community? Well, yeah. Not that you speak for everybody in the black community, nah, but I'm like, just curious your opinion for, for me, about mental health. For, for me, I've always, see, I, I look at myself as yeah. being extremely privileged. To this day, my mom and dad go everywhere with me. Well, your parents are the best. I mean, they're gr- the, great people. I mean, great people. so there was always, my dad was my coach, so if there was yeah. always something that went down, there was always people there with a support system right. to talk to me for, for, to, to, you know, when he sits there and he speaks to the fact that, you know, the way athletics is. Athletics and playing football in general, sometimes when you have so much passion, we just all want to be good. Like, to this day, like, I'm a successful person. But there's times that I just sit here and be like, man, did I, did I in college, did I get all I could out of my, myself? Did I, you know, I feel bad because I got injured and... You know, I was the number one, the best recruit that they had ever in years. And I feel like my college career was just like I spent too much time injured. And it's like I, you tear ACLs and have all these surgeries and you walk around with this guilt for a lot of people playing football. People don't understand. It takes a long time for you to detox from playing sports at a high level. It's a drug, right? In a it's, way, It's a drug. It's yeah. your vice. It's your life. It's a, it creates identity crisis. Your body ain't the same. But mentally... 
it's, it's, it's like trying to find out what you do after this. What do you do? I, even when I met Tyvis, Tyvis is a different person today than he was when I met him. And he'll tell you. Yeah. Because he said, yo, I, I just looked at my wife and was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do, right? right? So think about all of that and then compound it with the fact that you may have had, um, you know, issues with growing up and not having a, a strong family unit. And then put drugs or alcohol and a lot of different things. Because think about it, like, you know, I, I mentioned that, like, Terrell Pryor left the league, you know, ended up, he had a, a stabbing where it yeah. pretty much cost him. Yeah. We know we, we know what happened with Josh Gordon. Corey Coleman has a story. Think about it. Like, Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne, like, all of that. All of these things play a big role in, in your life. And I'm just glad the young man is here. I'm glad yeah. the young man is on the road to mending. And at the end of the day, um, he shouldn't feel bad. He made it to the highest level. Yeah. and got drafted in the first round. And, and who knows? Like, you know, it is like the Browns, it, especially in those years, they were they, a disaster. They, yeah, I it mean, was, it was it was the worst place to go. Yeah. But let's yeah. face well, it. He said, and I asked yeah. him, and I did a bad job phrasing the question, yeah. everything that could have gone wrong for Corey Coleman yeah. in a two-year stretch with the Browns went wrong. He told you point blank yeah. period. Yeah. Everything that could happen. His GM got fired. Right. He got hurt. The doctor screwed right. the situation. They manipulated the sound. He didn't get the fair opportunity. Like, everything that could have gone wrong in a two-year stretch for a player with immense right. talent. He was 29 years old. Yeah. Was the best receiver in the USFL last season. And, and, which and, means there was some sort of right. – and like, listen, like, there was way more potential to his game than we ever got a chance to and, really And realize. listen, everybody – you know, he hurt himself, too. Yeah. The, the yeah, he's, he's not he without fault. Yeah. He, and, and we all, you know, as someone who is an addict myself, as someone myself who has dealt with – Anxiety and depression. I, I can't, I don't know. I mean, I talk about going to therapy. I don't know if I've actually said that, that I've dealt with these things. And no matter how successful or not successful you are, nobody's immune from a mental health issue. I mean, it's prevalent throughout society and it's good for men in particular to be able to have these conversations. And I credit him. I know Cecil Shorts did some of the same stuff when he was on with, with Earl a few weeks ago. And you're seeing more and more athletes speaking out and saying, hey, it's okay to get help. It doesn't make you soft or weak to admit you're depressed or worried or whatever. These guys are under a lot of pressure. Here's a kid who, who comes into the NFL. He grew up essentially with no dad in a poor community, traveling from place to place because his mom couldn't keep an apartment early in his life. He comes from nothing. And then he's a first-round pick. He gets all this money. And now he can do whatever the hell he wants. And that's great, but it also is dangerous. Yeah. Because he didn't have good influences. And, and you could tell he was crushed by these coaches <laughs> and GMs yeah. that let him down because he was looking in a way for that father figure that he wasn't able to have as a kid. And, and now, thankfully for him, he does. His dad's in his life. But you could, you could see it in his face. The Buffalo comment. Like, yeah. Like that, that killed that, him. That hit, killed him. It, like, to hear him say that, to yeah. see his face like in real time, kind of telling us that story. Yeah. And I know some That's fans... That's the highest of high, and to get ripped yeah. away from you where you think you finally found, right. hey, this is, my, this is my chance. This is what I've worked 20, whatever, 23 right. years somebody, for. Like, somebody wants Someone me. to believe in me. Someone to, you know, give, right. me, give me the validation I've been seeking, in a sense, and then to have it right. ripped out that, like that. Like, that is... And I, will say, and I will say that, like, because... And, I will, and you talked about... And, and I know Earl wants to get in here and talk yeah, about yeah. something. Um... The validation is big. If I worked, you know, even just just saying just for me, like I, I worked for so many years to try to get on the radio, to try to get on television, to try to do things. And I would look around and I would see people that weren't as good as me, didn't work as long as I did, didn't put in the, the effort and the diligence, and I felt I was looked over. And after a while, when you when you grow and you come from a place where you don't see anybody doing it like you want, you do it, or they don't, you don't see people that say, "Hey, you can do it too," right? That validation that he wanted from his coaches yeah. hits tough because you 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 want people in your profession to say you are doing a good job. I right. think people believe the worst in guys that they want to dog it, that they don't want to go to practice, yeah. that they want to do. No, people really want. To say, hey, it feels good for somebody to say, hey, you're doing a good job. Yeah. Keep up the good work. And a lot of times people don't hear that. And, it, and it's just, it's tough on people if you're yeah. that type of person. And that's why he'll always have the love for Pat Shermer and kudos to Pat right. Shermer. And what a shame. Like, it finally seemed like his career was coming together. And then he tears his knee and that's that. 
Earl, go ahead. I know you wanted to jump in. What do you got? No, I thought that was a great interview. And, you know, just to hear you all kind of talk about, you know, he's a human. And you hear my takes, and that's pretty much where I always come from. I think a lot of time people forget uh, football is their occupation. It's their job. But when they take them jerseys off, they're still human beings. And I try to be very, very careful when I'm trying to be constructive and criticizing an athlete to make sure I'm not calling them out their name, that I'm not being disrespectful, et cetera. Because you never know like how that can have an impact on them on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I'm glad that you know he came on and he put himself out there to be vulnerable like that. And to follow up on what G said, boy, hell yeah, a thousand percent. There's a stigma against mental health in the black community. One of the reasons why I really, really wanted to do this, outside of it being a childhood dream, a lot of times I would listen to the radio, watch sports media, and I felt like black af athletes was not being represented right. I felt like that the moment that there was time to be criticized, that they was being overly criticized to the point that I felt like they were being disrespected. And I said, if I ever got an opportunity to be on this platform, that every time I get the chance to make sure I represent my people well, that I would do that. And so shout out to Corey Coleman, man, I'm praying for you. I tell people all the time, be great, spread love. Being great, come with a price. Spread love is priceless. Anybody can do that. You don't have to be friends, you don't have to be family. You could be a total stranger, pay somebody a compliment, and that's a form of spread love. Something for people to think about. Well said, well said, Earl. And listen, part of our job is to be critical of players at times. You can't always say good things about players, but there is a line that you don't want to cross. And you're in this business long enough, every once in a while you're going to do it. You feel bad about it. You try not to make it personal. Sometimes you get worked up. I have made it personal sometimes where I've criticized. And, and it, so every time you have a chance to talk with an athlete and hear about the, the, the Corey Coleman, the person, and not Corey Coleman, the football player, I think every experience that I have is meaningful, and I'm sure for you guys as well, because it opens your eyes to learning that. And, it, and you could tell he's, you know, it, it probably was not comfortable for him to talk about his mental health. And he was rich. But the fact that he, yeah, the he's fact rich. that he had the, you know. <laughs> that just goes to show you yeah. money. Like money don't, don't buy change happiness. none of that. Like yeah. like he would. I'm gl I'm sure he would happily trade his money to be able to just say, hey, I I'm in the locker room, with my guys, or yeah. if I had a relationship more with, yeah. with my father. Like you know. So sometimes I think the money thing really makes us as regular human beings who work every day from a nine to five. It puts a a spin on it where you look at guys and say, well, you have this amount of money, so you should be, your life is better than mine, so you should yeah. be thankful. It doesn't work that way. We all, we, money is relative. Like, money doesn't change. It don't give you health. It don't give you, it don't give you longevity. No. It really don't help. It doesn't change religion. your mental health. Right. It, it's a positive because right. it can give you things, yes, in a positive way, but uh, if you have a mental health issue, money is not going to make it go away. And it probably can make it worse. Yeah. It, it certainly could. <laughs> it certainly could. And, and, yeah, best team. I think as fans, everybody, ourselves included, when you're when like, obviously people go to the extremes. You you wish people death. You you are a, you curse them out. Whatever. Like, just think about that the next time you you talk. So so kudos to him and all the best to him. But go ahead. We do got to criticize players from time to time. Of course, it's part of the job. Evan we all do earlier. It. It's part of it. Just when we do it, when when you guys do it, whoever's doing it, just keep it between the lines. Like that. That's all fair. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, uh, let's say, should we save the package? Let's save the package for over time because we'll put it on YouTube yeah, flat yeah. out and, and as it is. Yeah, let's So do if you want to see the full, we'll just tell you what's going on. Yeah. And you go with that? Yeah, that's fine. I'm yeah. ready for the game or the package, whichever you Yeah, let's want. play the game because we, we're going to put the full package on YouTube so Rashad, who edited yeah. it for G, gets the full credit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out yeah. to, uh, we, we're going to give you the beside, behind the scenes of um, Earl's in this, me, we went to, um, you know, Deshaun Watson's opening of his uh, restaurant left yeah. his, and so we got some behind uh, scenes interview we, we with the up. people so that's coming up so if you really want to watch it make sure you become a member if you're a member that's make right. sure you come in a member and hit that notification bell and you if you're not we'll put it right on YouTube directly yeah, yeah we'll put it like on 2 o'clock so and you see G Bush and yeah. Earl walking off into the sunset together it, it really, it's a really cute <laughs> shot end. it's hey, a really really cute see, shot this is, I thought you said look <laughs> I'm, I'm, I I'm going to yeah. fake him in a mental breakdown yeah. you better stop playing with me <laughs> All right, let's play the game. Go ahead, Anthony. Before we get into let's the game, have some though, maybe fun. I'll re-edit it for the Ultimate Brown Show every yeah. Monday and Friday. Don't forget about the Ultimate Brown Show, the G-Host, every Monday and Friday. You have Tyvis 
on a lot there too on Mondays, correct? Nah, I got a whole, regular. Tyvis, I'll be having Quincy on there. I got a whole payroll. I'm crazy on the Monday and Friday. Make sure you check that out. He's spending big money on these guests. Yeah, he so is. So make it All worth right, it. guys, don't Let's forget go. to check out the Ultimate Browns. But we're going to do a Would You Rather today. Uh, I put this together. I tested it on Tyvis. I sent it to my girlfriend. She thought it was funny. And then my dad asked me what kind of drugs I did. <laughs> Perfect. So if it's Molly, sucks, according yes. to uh, G. Yeah, Bush, did Molly. Molly. Yeah. By the way, kids, kids, no. Don't do Molly. Do don't do kids. none of that. that kids this, shouldn't be doing anything. This drug. is the disclaimer. Yeah. Don't even drink coffee. G. Bush did not tell you to do that. Or tea. Oh, right. Yeah, right. No caffeine. All right. Well, you can be caffeine free here, tea. Guys. Nope. So, Sorry. Watson wins the AFC, but the Cleveland will lose the Browns again. Or the Cavs keep JB for the next eight years, but get LeBron and Bronny. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, say, say it one more time. All right, so Watson wins the AFC, but the city will lose the Browns again. What a terrible one. Or the one. Cavs like keep JB for the next eight years, but LeBron and Bronny. Obviously, come back. it's Obviously, one. it's Bron. We got LeBron yeah. and Bronny. Because yeah. as soon as we get LeBron, he's the coach. So, you want to win the AFC and go to the Super Bowl. Not if it means losing Not the team. Not if it means losing the Browns. You lose the team. I, I, I would lose you that. You choose anything over that. Dang. Also, and, 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 I, and most of us care way more about the Browns than the Cavs anyway. So. Yeah, so if you would have said, if they lost, if the, <laughs> they don't do this. But yeah. if you lost the Guardians, <laughs> but the Cavs won three Super Bowls, or the Browns won three Super Bowls Oh, in bye bye Guardians, yeah. Well, that was too easy. <laughs> but G- G- That's all. The Guardians. G's, no, no, G's, G's right, though. Yeah. If you have LeBron, he's the head coach. He's the coach. So yeah. JB's just a figurehead at that point. He's just a stick right. figure. Yeah. The Cavs so. not winning anything anyway, so what's the difference? I don't like that question. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I did put the weaker ones up front. All right, All right, next one. Miles breaks the sack record, but Ward and Emerson are out for the rest of the season, or Miles gets traded to Pittsburgh for Cam Hayward. No. Uh, well, if he breaks the sack record, I mean, I'm assuming that would be like week 17, week 18. I mean, I am very frustrated. Ward and Emerson? I thought this, these were going to be like fun things. These oh, is- no. My my goal going These into this is going to make it terrible. Or Miles Garrett gets traded to Pittsburgh. I mean, that, okay, so that Miles Garrett. So here's I, the question: Would you rather have Cam Hayward, Ward, and Emerson, or just Miles Garrett? That's that's another crazy. I'd have Hayward for this year. I guess I, I think Hayward, I'd rather have. Yeah, I'd rather have. But Hayward. Hayward's old though. And Miles Garrett play, with T.J. Watt? No. No, no, no. You, you almost fooled me into thinking Miles Garrett and TJ Watt is done. We're not getting passes off. No. Nah, uh, give me – yeah, sorry, I'm d- sorry, Ward and Emerson. One. I'm sorry. taking the first one. I'll At least Greg Newsom gets his bag. I'll be a contrarian. I'll take the second one. <laughs> they right. both suck. It'll be a Northwestern <laughs> connect. Awful. Mitchell, Cameron, Mitchell, and Greg Newsom. They're all Newsom depressing. I don't want any of these Dang, things man, to happen. Anthony, this is kind of tough. Go ahead, man. All right, guys. You ready for your next one? Yeah. Not really. So, no. <laughs> yeah. Nick Chubb comes back 100%, but Johnny Manziel has to replace Watson. Or the Guardians will knock out the Yankees this year in the playoffs, but Jose gets traded. Oh, wow. Easy, the second one. The, yeah, 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 knock out the Yankees. I'd love for them to be the – I mean, I don't want Jose to get traded, but I, I can't yeah, have you, Johnny Manziel playing quarterback. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. John, like John, Johnny Manziel and Nick Chubb is not, a and game. he's out of, sh- and he's out of shape. Honestly, I think fans would rather have me play quarterback than Johnny Manziel. Facts, well, like I don't you know about that. Yeah, I'm taking the, taking the bottom. At off. least I would attempt to try. Can I would we, try. Somebody said, "Can we get Manziel on the show?" <laughs> we, we tried. Can he we is. get Can we get Josh Gordon on the show? We've tried many times with him. I'm not gonna lie. When Mike first told me we were having Corey Coleman on, my first reaction was, "Why?" Yeah, he I, I'm not gonna like, lie. And then I did my research and read that article and good job by dogs by nature. Shout out, shout and out I, to my and man. I was like, Oh, that's fascinating. Shout out to Let's... Barry Shuck, man. He, he hit me up. He said, yo, I did a really good article on Corey Coleman. I yeah. said, for oh, real? That's who wrote it for. Our dogs uh, by yeah. Nature. Yeah. Okay. He said, maybe, you, maybe he did you a might nice job. Shout out to Barry for that. He did a very nice job and it led to a bunch of good questions we were able to ask him, but yeah. it, was good. it was really good. Shout out to him. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the, yeah. Give me the, give me the Yankees one. And what's yeah. next? All right. Uh, unrelated, by the way, these looked a lot better in Photoshop this morning when I made them. I'm so sorry. Nobody can read the text. <laughs> uh, but we, we might have time for the package, too. Yeah. So yeah, Donovan Mitchell going? resigns for five years, but Garland and Mobley go, both get traded or the Browns go one and 16, but they get a dome stadium. The, first, oh one, the first one, what G's been screaming for. That's all the G first wants. one we want to yeah, we been. That, that's, all, that's the only thing I G mean, wants. I don't really want Mobley well, to get traded, I but I'd certainly take that's it. That's why I added Mobley into this. You got to think about that. But yeah. I've been easy. There's I mean, nothing to think I, I've been about. trying to get – is that package? Can I get, uh, can I get Ingram and uh, McCullum? How bad do you want a dome stadium downtown, though? 
Not that bad. I, I'm okay. Uh, that's fine. I feel like I could get it. Fair I'm enough. We're going to have time it's, for the package. It's one. <laughs> that was easy. All right, guys. Next up. Which one? All right. The Dolans sell the Guardians, but their name changes again, this time to the Spiders, or Trevor Bauer signs with us and wins the Cy Young this year. I'm fine with either of those. Yeah. But I, I'll, take, I'll take Bauer. In that I'll instance. take two. I know there's zero chance of that <laughs> happening. Given I'll the take. fact of what's going on with uh, Bieber, give me that number two right there. All right. Let's keep moving. We'll, we'll have time for the package, too. Yep. Yeah. No. All right. We'll, we'll do this. All right. Ready for this one? The Cavs have a magical run to win the NBA, but the bubble or but COVID makes it the bubble 2.0. Oh Will the Browns God. make it to the Super Bowl and lose to a hip drop tackle call in the last play of the game? Oh, that's a good one. I, 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 I I'm can't. sorry the Browns have to lose the Super Bowl, but I'm not sitting through. I'm not doing COVID I, again. Look, look, I, I do not well, want to wait, wish. Uh, wait, are yeah. we in COVID or is it just a bubble? No, it, I mean, double lockdown, bubbles back. Oh, no, no, I would do anything with that. Anything with that. Anything with that. I cannot. We can't live that again. No, two. You can I'm tell taking, me to cut off my left arm. I choose. The Browns lose on a hip drop yeah, tackle. That's fine. I, and, and I want to be the room with G. Bush if that happened. And that, <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I want to see Tyvis. Jeez. No, G. Bush would be way more emotional than Tyvis. Well, well no, but mean, Tyvis is the one that hates the hip drop. If, if that happened, yeah. you, y'all would have to say, G. Bush, you, you got to put down Twitter. You can't like you. We, ta- we take all your phones. You're, go- you're gonna get fired. You're there gonna- would be one of those videos, like you know how you see those videos of people breaking their TV. Yeah, yeah, like, Bush, I would, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like my wife. We have to, if, if the Browns make the Super Bowl, we have to put G. Bush in a straight jacket. <laughs> <laughs> like legit, we have to have G. in a straight jacket <laughs> for everyone else's safety. Yeah, it's hey, true. I'm listen. I, I'm like I Can would buy a straight jacket. I would be on the float with <laughs> the Browns. I would yeah. be like, you're gonna let me on the float. <laughs> yeah, I, you're gonna let me up here, bro. I, when you said the straight jacket thing, I had this this because yesterday I heard somebody mention a mosh pit, and then Aaron was asking me what a mosh pit is, All right, let's and go. I was like, "Can you imagine the Browns yeah. win the Super Bowl, and then you like in celebration there's a mosh pit, and you got to deal with Gene Bush in the mosh pit? He'd be, <laughs> be killing crazy. people." All right, right, next we gotta, one, we got to hit the package by. Go ahead. Oh, we'll just, we so. can just go a little longer, and we'll call it over right, time. Yeah. Last one, uh, I came up with one non-sports one. I become the lead host of UCSS, and we all get five-year contracts. Or Mike has to leave, but we get Joe Thomas as a full-time panelist. Oh, kick me out. You don't want to five-year contract, I would Mike? not want to do the show if Mike kick, left. Kick me out. If Joe as Thomas much as I bust his balls, I do not want Mike to leave too. the show. I'm, I'm I would the not like contract that. And I'll learn how to host. Joe, oh, uh, yeah. No, nah, listen. I'm, Joe Thomas is the big – like, going from Joe, me to Joe Thomas is like upgrading from Johnny Manziel to Deshaun Watson. I wouldn't five-year contracts. That. Joe Thomas not going to take care of my kids, man. Yeah, respectfully, I want the stability. I'm, yeah. Y'all I, are crazy. I would take one. I love you guys, but you're crazy. No offense, Anthony. You'd be a terrible lead host. I mean, I love you, but you'd be a terrible lead host. I'd have to learn a lot. But um, no, nah, I would have. To, I couldn't do that. I, but I can't just, fire McNuggets. Yeah, no, no. no give me, give me the. I gotta me, go one. Hey, I, I, I met McNuggets it, at a shady bar to sign the deal to start yeah. with. That is, that's true. <laughs> like that's for true. real. Like no, like for real. We like. He pulled up like, yo, come down to this bar. I'm like, all right. He was like, yeah, we're gonna have a great show, and it worked. You know how with te- you know how with teams like you always hear about like this is the glue guy. Yeah, you can. McNuggets is our glue guy. Like yeah. he's by, by far. He is the glue guy on the show. So yeah, I start show- cannot do the show without I him. I start showing up at 11:30. <laughs> no, I don't like this producer. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine. Did that real quick before we play the pack, Did I ever tell you the first time I met G? Did I ever tell you that story? I don't think so. So we met at the ABC Tavern in, in Ohio City. I had, yeah. Well, I was here 3 days. Like yeah. I hadn't started working. I had no idea. G's Twitter picture, which I, have you changed yet? No, same thing. G's Twitter picture, if you guys don't know, pull up G. Bush's Twitter. And pull up any G. Bush tweet if you can. One second. Tell me, tell me the Twitter profile picture of G. Bush, which it just passes down. Right. This, <laughs> this is what I thought. And I'm the only person in there, and I see G. walk in. That yeah. doesn't scream 6'4", 325. You're right. That does not scream 6'4", 325. Well, well, you look kind of thin, like really skinny he, he, in that look, picture. Listen. I thought he was going to be 5'4". <laughs> that's, what, that's what everybody in this video I, kept saying. They kept hey, being I like, thought, he was thought you were Miles Simmons in that no, picture. Everybody, <laughs> everybody who saw me was like, dang, yeah. I didn't know you were that big. I could that's why everybody more. always says yeah. I didn't realize you were that big because yeah. of that we're, picture we're probably. We're zooming in on the profile picture yeah, right and now. So he walks in, and I see a giant. G's huge. G is huge. He's massive. Yes. And it was just me and him. We had a beer. We talked. It, we talked over it. I showed him the intro. We showed him the set. I was like, Yeah, that that does not scream. I'm a giant former D1 athlete. I'm six no, four, it doesn't. I'm pretty right there. I bro. think it's because of the glasses. <laughs> I'm pretty right there. Listen, hey, by the way, if I ever I don't know get, what it is. I it's t- the lighting. He looks light. I told I told my wife if I ever get <laughs> if I ever get down to that size again, 
You better not let me How much did you weigh there, by the way? Man, I was still almost 300 pounds. Oh, there. really? Yeah, man. Good for you. Well, that, I, right, it was funny. But yeah, let's play I, the package. I have three super chats real quick. That okay, I'll yeah. and then you can and then we'll play, go play with your we'll package the there, package Anthony. And we'll run a little late today. <laughs> Real quick, up from Mud, Bull shouting out and praising a guy on the radio and then bashing the cellist and petty rule from the admin is the perfect combination. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Dang, it's like, classic Bull. Thank you. Classic. Thank classic you, Mud bull. guy, whatever your name is. All right, from Crypto, uh, shout out to Corey. Thank you for sharing your experience and insight with us. Thank you, Corey. Yes. Keep up the good work and sure hope you got some Bitcoin or Ethereum. And then from our boy, Daryl, great show today. UCSS, Earl, and Anthony. Thank you, Daryl. All right, let's Appreciate play this package, you, guys. So, G, you want to set it up? Yes. All right, this is behind the scenes. We've been teasing it for a while. Shout out to my guy, Rashad. Did a good job of doing it. This is behind the scenes of uh, me and Earl checking out uh, Deshaun Watson and Lefty's Cheese Steak. Deshaun Watson opening up a restaurant. You know you got to support 216 in the building. We're going to see if we got some good food. We're going to see... If he got some good service, and most of all, we're gonna see how the people of Cleveland feel about it. It's the barbershop, UCSS, all that and more. You see it? Earl the Pearl in the building. Earl the Pearl, my big brother, G Bush. Hey. We out here repping Pearl the right way. Come on in here. Y'all know how we do it. The rough dog in the house. Big dog, Will in the house. The real true dog. Pop Don't show up. up. We had G Bush on the, in the building lot on the dog bus. Hey, what else? Adam the Bull. Yeah. Everybody in there might be big nuggets. Keep going. Keep going. Baby. We Keep going. I watch y'all every day. Shout out to Deshaun Watson. He got it popping out here. He got the music going. He got family. He got friends out here. He's out here doing his thing. And, and, and we out here supporting. Can we get a shout out? Tomorrow's his birthday. He's messing with uh, me. Happy I'm birthday. London. Happy birthday, London. Thank you. Yes, sir. Chief Bush, WKYC. Why cheese steaks? Cheese steaks, man. Best cheese steaks in the world right here. Best cheese steaks in the world? Hands down. What made you want to support the inner city? This is big. You see the people showing love out here. It's deep. Uh, or what made you pick this location? Uh, it's just the best location for you know people to be able to see the brand. We want to be able to be right in the center, as close as possible to everyone in the city, uh, so they can come by and get some food, have some good fellowship, and uh, just support the city. We appreciate you. Talking to the quarterback guru right here, who pushed the Avery. He speak his mind. You stand on business, though. Can we get you a record and give us a, 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 a win record for the Browns this year? Can we do that? Oh, your man's gonna look at you crazy. They're gonna like, no, don't you do that. What are you gonna do? Uh, <laughs> Man, That's his man, right? Let's go 12 and 5. Listen, I'm greedy, Deshaun. He said 12 and 5. I need 4,500. He trying to shut everybody up. Contrary to Bob Bruce Lee, the city of Cleveland got love for Deshaun Watson. It's good to see. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We see it. We had to pull up, man. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. The Mary Kay, one of the Hall of Fame, the queen of the city when it comes to this media thing, Mary Kay. The question is to the people, should I sit down and get one of these, these cheese steaks? It might be double me. I think we might have to sit down and see me actually get into it. See, this is the type of Browns fans we got in here, man. This is how we get down. He got pads on under this. Full trip. The food, like, how long did it take you to get ready to come up here? Today? Man, you know, this is my Sunday clothes. <laughs> And we're gonna try that food. So, like, what we, doing with the so we, we gotta taste the cheese steak. Okay. If you eat Cleveland, you gotta have a corned beef. So you gotta get that. Corned beef egg rolls. Corned beef egg rolls. What else? And the mother of the rolls. We're gonna do them. What else? Two corned beef. And then, what else? We want wings. Every single day I feel the pleasure. But I think Deshaun might have wrapped this homemade for me, dog. We don't even wait. We order, we take it right out the bag. Look at that. Now, a good sign of a cheesesteak is, do you have grease on the outside of the paper? You see that? You see that? Then it hooked me up. Bread salt. Let's get, let's get to it. Can't come to Cleveland, but I 
got the corned beef, man. Okay. So let's check that out. What you got up there? What you I got the corned beef. I got the burger. Good flavor. Gotta get that pickle. I love the corned beef. Let's try some of these egg rolls. Come with a thousand dollar dip and salt. Not everybody can do wings. Hey, 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 these ain't different. Every single day I feel the pleasure. We're here with the mayor of University Heights, Mayor Brennan. Mayor, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How did we come into this being here at University Heights? Well, uh, it's been a long process, uh, and, and you know, I wish I could say it was an overnight success, but like every overnight success, it was years in the making. We've been working on renovating this property for years with the previous ownership. Uh, Lefty's came along and bought it and finished it out, and it's beautiful what they've done here. we got the grand opening, we got the Sean Watson here, we got Sam Berry, the founder of Lefty's Cheap Sticks here. Uh, we got a lot of uh, Coach Stavansky was here earlier. We got a lot of great Browns fans, Browns players, uh, people from the city, residents, just lots of excitement here in University Heights about what is happening here at Lefty's Cheap Sticks. Hey, listen, man, we out here, man. We came, we saw, we conquered, we, conquered. we conquered. ate. Hey, it's beautiful to see how many key people came out to support Deshaun Watson doing something in the community. I'm from this side of town. I grew up in this area. Like, the love was shown, man. So it just lets you know, man, the stuff that we see on social media, that's just a small microscope of what's really going on, man. Okay. That's what's really going on. Hey, listen. Oh, uh, that was good. Shout out to Rashad. Shout, shout out to Rashad, man. One of the best doing it, man. Listen, <laughs> he got all my angles. See, that's, oh. the, that's the way. You, when he when I'm working with somebody that knows me, yeah. he understands what to edit. He got my good size. He got my mannerisms. Earl, I thought it was dope, bro. What you think? <clears throat> Fire, man. Chef kiss, man. Great time. Great content. Um, a whole lot of fun. The food was fire, man. That was dope, bro. Like. That, no, we need to no. be in the street like that all the time. I'm did a great Steve, job. Yeah. What we doing? What we doing? Send me to. I need to be at bakeries, cookouts. Send me on the road. I just. We tried to get a G. Bush out of the bull food show going, but listen, uh, I, I might have to finance it. Techno we, wasn't finance. Was it? The, I, 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 G. Hey, everybody, stand to. I might have something we might be able to do this weekend, man. I'll, we'll talk to you after the show. All I know is, my mind in the last minute of that video is racing with memes. Right. Oh my God! The well, the G Bush, the G Bush Earl with sexy music. Well, like, and, and Rashad, did you listen? We love Rashad. Is a good dude. Like, before Whoa. before the stand up show last year, I told Rashad. I, oh, I actually God, ran by some up. jokes by Rashad. Yeah, he was funny. in here. That's funny. When he gave me the approval to use the one joke that was a little racy, I said I knew. Okay, if Rashad's yeah, right. cool with it, I can use it on stage. Uh, he did you dirty with the sexual music and the sexual uh, dissolves while you were bro, eating wings, that bro. man. <laughs> G. Bush was getting real intimate with the wings. I, but it was yeah. good, though. I'm sure it was, but he but, also did. But, but he did. And then he the only thing he missed was a black and white. But that's yeah, it. He turned yes, that black I and white for one He second. almost did that. When he was like, <laughs> and we, put, we, we both turned around and looked. It was like, is there a shooter behind us? That guy, like, was really, who is that guy? He's Spider the Spider-Man, brown Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, he did, like, the creep up on you guys. And, and we, there was also a shot yeah. of this in slow motion with some different music. It'll be great. There was a shot. See you again. There was a shot of just Ian, uh, of Earl and G, where G just goes, we came. And we're just going to stop it there. And just, just a <laughs> shot of you two just saying, we came. Like, and, there's going to be so many different. By the way, uh, can you Rashad, shot, thank remember you. the song, the, 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 sh the, the shot where the creeper comes up? Uh, he's not a creeper. Stop. Well, but he looks like a creeper. Don't, remember, don't, don't. He's not stop. I'm just kidding, but, stop. but remember the song? Remember the song? I always feel like somebody's watching me. Yeah, yeah, I just it. need to know what you guys were talking about right now. I, 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 Almost <laughs> paradise. And, as a matter of fact, we're I'm looking at him like, Paul. Yeah. I'm looking at Earl like, pause. Come on, bro. That's, you I was can't. like, I came and Jesus like, pause. Look, 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 this is crazy. <laughs> And, and then for a little bit, it looked like me and Earl was like at a table you having had, a, date. a date. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we was dating. Like it was full fledged balloons behind us and everything. Like that was crazy. Show that one picture again. Steve, yeah, Steve, go back. Show that We're last picture. On. Yeah, yeah. Let's get Spider Man in here. So let me tell you about. You know what Earl said? Just said here. I just got the word. I just got a text. So he said, "Hey, G, let me tell you what I heard about Andy Roth." Oh. 
You know what? We got to go. We See, gotta yeah, go. I'm kidding. We gotta I'm go. kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you, Andy. We'll see you <laughs> later on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs>